Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Week 13 Regional semi final final Saturday. The Lucas Cubs, the Danville Blue Devils. Let's kick it over to Aaron Hines and Chris Miller from WMAN for the call. Good evening, and welcome to the Colt Corral here at Clear Fork High School. As tonight, it is Saturday night high school playoff football here on WMAN, and a big matchup here tonight as the number 10 seed Lucas Cubs take on the number three seed 
Danville Blue Devils. We welcome you inside the Wendy's broadcast booth, everybody. Aaron Hines alongside Chris Miller tonight filling in for Eric Will. Glad to have him with us tonight here on WMAN and iHeartRadio as we get ready for a huge matchup tonight. First of all, Chris, it's thanks for joining us. Danville 10-2, and and Lucas 6-6, six and, six. and if anybody knows anything about these two programs, tough physical football, right? Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say happy Veterans Day weekend to everybody out there. Um, uh, yeah, these two programs, uh, just as, as you look down through the rosters, Aaron, just the generational names that, that represent each program. Uh, just kind of, you know, you look at some of these names and you remember that, you know, that, that their fathers and uncles and grandparents that played for and represented each of these programs. It's, it's really cool. And they kind of pride themselves on the same thing. They're, they're tough towns. They, they pride themselves on toughness and, and uh, really looking forward to those, these two historic programs kind of going at it tonight in the Valley. All right, we're going to jump in and talk about tonight's big matchup. Again, each with a chance to move to play for a regional title. Let's begin with the Lucas Cubs, who I mentioned are 6-6. Six and six. Again, Division Seven regional semifinal, 14th year head coach Scott Spittler on a 32-degree night ready for kickoff. He is in shorts. If you don't know Coach Spittler, I... He's that, uh, no matter if it's warm or it's cold, but they're in the playoffs, Chris, for the ninth straight year. If they win tonight, they would play for a regional title for the fifth time in the last eight years. That statement is just incredible. It, it is incredible. That, has he made it every year since he's been at Lucas? I, th I, I, I don't know. That it that it actual feels like it, right? I feel, yeah. I feel like every year he's there, they're in the playoffs, and what a tremendous job he's done with that football program. Well, they've won the past three matchups against Danville. And, of course, uh, you look at the Cubs, and not everybody a fan of the expanded playoffs, but if they weren't expanded, the 10-seed Cubs wouldn't be here. Here they are. They've upset the 2-seed. They beat the 7-seed. They traveled to the Ohio-West Virginia border, the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. Doesn't matter where they play. They seem to travel, and they seem to get it done. We've, we've seen that a couple times this year where uh, seeded teams um, that, that may, may have not made it before uh, the eight-team expansion still kind of playing. So, um, yeah, this is this is a great opportunity. This is kind of why you do it. All right, well, as we jump in, talk about Lucas. We talk about them coming off a nice win a week ago. They upset the two seed Lowellville, thirty-five to twenty-five, and you have to talk about Logan Toms, who ran for two hundred yards a week ago. He's ran for four seventy-seven uh, here so far in two playoff games, seven scores. That that doesn't even that, that's incredible, Chris. Seven touchdowns in two playoff games. Yeah, that, those are great numbers, and and you know that that's what they pride themselves on running a football, and they're gonna spread that out to a couple guys and and uh, what, a, what a nice what a nice couple nights he's had leading into tonight tell you what Grayson Jackson and Zach Deal combined for three scores a week ago and 130 yards uh, they're missing Andrew Finello due to injury and that's a big loss but other guys seem to fill in the one thing I'll bring up real quickly then we're going to talk about Danville is the fact that Lucas had a young offensive and defensive line they've moved the pieces around if you heard our pregame interview with coach Spittler and he told me Chris, week seven and on, they've really found the pieces that work. Isn't it amazing? They had all those losses against really tough teams, but it made them a better football team. I, I listened to that interview, you know, with Coach Spittler, and they kind of talk about kind of moving those pieces around all year, trying to find that right combination. And and in programs that are sustaining success, they're, they're, they're able to do that. They're able to kind of slide guys around and find that right combination. You look at those O-linemen, 160, 180, 170, 168, you know, in terms of pounds up front, those those aren't huge kids, but they, they, they play a lot bigger than they are, that's for sure. Well, on the other side, a very good team in the Danville Blue Devils. They're 10-2, and two, the three seed under first-year head coach Matt Bloom. He spent the two previous years as the offensive coordinator. They've won eight of nine, 83 points in two playoff games. Of course, they're looking to play for a regional title. They, of course, were in the state semifinals back in 2017. But what I thought was a neat stat he told me was if Danville wins tonight, they would play the, for their ninth regional title in school history. They got a good tradition in football. It's it's a historic program that I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to see kind of come back to life here. Um, you know, current coaching staff's done a nice job of putting them this, in this position uh, to kind of get back to old Danville traditional football in the playoffs and making deep runs. Well, a week ago and a wild one. I know you were there to watch it. The OH Report were teaming up with them tonight. They were there. They beat Hillsdale 42-41. to 41. 
you have to start with their running back. Max Payne just does it all. Over 1,200 yards, what, 13, 14 touchdowns. He had, Travis was telling me, two jump passes for touchdowns a week ago. That kid's the real deal. What, what a cool name for a football player, yeah. Max Max Payne. Um, you know, bringing the pain uh, when he runs a football. is low to the ground, got a great center of gravity. His motor keeps going. Uh, and another guy here I think you got to take a look at here early is number 45, Caden Colopy. Last week against Hillsdale had a couple of couple of big plays early. I think he took one to the house about 55, 60 yards just on a now screen, and he's got some nice speed on the perimeter. So Danville pretty balanced offensively. Danville, you mentioned Colopy, nine touchdowns, 42 catches over 500 yards. The quarterback, Walker Wessaker, 16 touchdowns. He's close to 1,400 yards passing. He's a first-year starter, and listening to their coach, Matt Bloom, he told me he's a very good leader. He's playing at a high level. What you might not know if you don't follow Danville, he's accounted for 22 touchdowns in approaching 1,800 yards I know Max Payne gets the headlines but he's had a nice year yeah, he's had a great year and I think I think he had you know went through some some cramping issues a week ago and, and kind of came back from that so a tough kid and a, and a tough program and I think that's what we're going to see you know riddled with the field tonight with just just uh, kids giving great effort and, and, and being tough football players I'm really excited about this one Aaron well the winner of this game will move on to play as I mentioned for a regional title against the winner of Warren JFK in Salineville Southern that game being played tonight in Canfield and the Danville Blue Devils hit the field blue jerseys white pants and the white helmet the Cubs in the all white jerseys across the way love that orange metallic helmet as they are ready to go Danville won the toss they have elected to receive the football we will see that offense first it scores 28 points a game they allow a little under 16, the Lucas Cubs, 27 points a game and 22. I know Travis and I were talking about keys to victory, and both teams really, really, when you think about it and jump in and talk about keys like that, the line of scrimmage is so big. Both want to run the football. We start with Lucas, control that line, but you want to dominate because what they do, it's really difficult to stop. And, of course, they know when they talk about Danville, they got the big play potential with Payne and Colopy. Yeah, I mean, Lucas just kind of, their, their key to the game is do what they do. And, and if they can continue to do um, what they're good at uh, and limit possessions and, and, you know, in games with Lucas, you may only get the ball five times. Uh, if they're doing, um, you know, if things are working well for them offensively, they're going to limit possessions. So, you know, I think, I think uh, definitely keys for Lucas would be just to continue to do what they do well and, and dominate that line of scrimmage. That's a good point, by the way. You don't get as many possessions if you're Danville we talk about Lucas and what they do. You know it's coming. Can you stop that that Cub running attack? It's not the same offense you see from a lot of teams. Uh, they want to be smart in the passing game. Lucas is a very good secondary. Corbin Toms is great. And we're going to have the kickoff. Here we go. It'll be fielded by Danville. Zach Deal on the kickoff short return. Out around just across the 35-yard line. And it was on the return. Danville on the return, as we mentioned, short return. So it'll be 35-yard line is where Danville will start tonight. 32 degrees, wind chill in the mid-20s. It snowed today. It did. <laughs> and people are still rolling in here. Well, it's going to be a big crowd, as you mentioned. Both teams with a short drive. And Danville will start with the football first. Wessaker and quarterback in the gun. Man in motion. He'll hand the football off, coming to the near side, trying to get the corner. Good job by that Cub defense. That was Max Payne, and Lucas came flying in in numbers to take him no, down. No, no, Max Payne, the ball carrier for now, Lucas did a great job of stringing that ball out. You kind of see linebackers just scraping over top of guys at the point of attack, attack continuing to string that ball all the way to the sidelines. They'd have been fine running him right out of bounds on something like that. Tell you what, Lucas had two guys in there. I saw Dylan Page, among others, on the far side. They'll take that. On that play will go for a one-yard loss. Second down, 11, with 11-18 to play here in the opening quarter. Danville second possession, excuse me, second play of this first possession. They'll fake it with four wide receivers. The quarterback's going to load up, going to throw a pass into the hands of the receiver and then knock loose. Good job. Logan Toms able to knock that football away from tight end Caleb Lucas, and that'll be incomplete, bringing up second, excuse me, third down and long here now. And I'll tell you what, that Lucas defense two plays in, 
and been right there where the balls ran to and right where it was thrown to. That yeah, was a nice nice little bootleg coming out here with, with some play action from uh, from Max going going into the boundary, booting out here, trying to get a trying to get one of the flats. Third down and long for Danville. As we mentioned, the football at their own 34-yard line. Just under a minute gone here in quarter number one. They'll pass it left side to the far side. The receiver got his hands on it but couldn't bring it in. It's incomplete on that far side. That ball was targeted for Caden Colopy. Again, it is incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth down now for Danville. They'll have to punt the football. So if you are Lucas, a three and out, just what the doctor ordered. Yeah, Danville's going to wish they had those last two balls back, uh, both in the hands of receivers. Got to bring those in and, and just keep these sticks moving. All right, so Danville is going to punt the football away. Max Payne with a booming punt. It'll hit at about the 15-yard line. And it, oh, it's just going to roll into the end zone. A man was sprinting down there to try and keep it out of the end zone, and he just could not get there. Trying to see who was sprinting down the field. It was really, really close. And he just could not get there. And it was Wesley Norris, the junior, who almost got there but couldn't. And that's a break for the Lucas Cubs. Gosh, one thing we noticed uh, when I was at the game last week is the leg strength of Max Payne was, was uh, kind of jumped off the field at you really early. That's so, a weapon. Yeah, it Absolutely. certainly is. All right, so Lucas with 10. 50 to play here in quarter number one. We'll have their first possession. We are scoreless. A few little flurries falling from the sky here in the Clear Fork Valley. And Lucas will pack it in at the line of scrimmage. First and 10 for the Cubs at their own 20-yard line. Quarterback Andrew Smullen will hand the football off right up the middle. And again, just a sea of bodies and not much movement right up the middle. You know, Danville's really loaded the line of scrimmage there. Um, you, you know, trying to take that dive play away. That's that's Lucas's bread and butter. They're going to set you up with dive. And I notice they've got they've moved the Lions get over here to the defensive left side, number 55 for Danville. Lucas Lucas at times tends to be a little right-handed, so uh, we'll see if they're if they're attacking in here into the Danville bench here a little bit. Handoff up the middle went to Daniel Hawkinsmith. Sometimes even for broadcasters, it's hard to tell who's got the football as they just disappear. And again, one yard gain for the Lucas Cubs. They'll pitch it left side now, trying to get the corner. That's Grayson Jackson. He's got a good block, 30, 35, and he'll go out of bounds into the sideline. Lucas with a very nice play on that left side. Chris, they pitch it to him. Holman Kitchen Supply first down. And I'll tell you what, good block out there off the left side. Yeah, it looks like um, it looks like Caden Colopy came in and kind of tried to bounce the ball outside, and there wasn't a defender wider than him. And that's what Lucas does so well is is they put they put those guys that they're responsible for forcing the ball back in just in a bind. And if you spill the ball, they run outside. If you contain it, they're they're just happy to cut it up inside. First and ten for the Lucas Cubs. The football at their own 33-yard line, just over 10 to play here in the opening quarter. They'll hand it this time, Logan Toms. He'll hit the line of scrimmage, push his way near the 40-yard line, and then get stood up right there. On that last play before that, Caudill for Lucas had a good block that time, running off the right side. I think it was Buck Arnold who had a nice block there, and Lucas with a nice chunk there on yeah. first down. You know, it feels like a victory for the defense, but you look at the sticks, and it was a gain of, you know, seven yards before before they got contact. So they're going to have to do a better job here of just kind of staying low and, and, and stretching this ball to the sideline. Second and three, Lucas again the football at their own 40-yard line. Scoreless, 9.28 left here in the opening quarter. Regional semifinal against Danville. They'll pitch it now to Grayson Jackson, trying to work his way off the left side. Breaks a tackle, trying to struggle. I think he's going to have a first down. At first, he wasn't going to have it. Second effort gives the Cubs a first down out near the 44. How about that effort? Yeah, he just keeps his legs moving, and there, there's one, two, three, four, five blue jerseys to the, to the point of attack, but four yards too late, first down, Luke. All right, so the Cubs move the chains. That's two times. Brought to you by Holman Kitchen Supply in downtown Mansfield. Remodeling windows, doors, and more. Think Holman Kitchen Supply first. 9.05 to play, opening quarter. Scoreless, but Lucas has the football first and 10. The ball at their own 44-yard line. As they pack it in at the line of scrimmage, remember, no Andrew Finello due to injury, and that was a big loss for this team, but other guys have just stepped right in. And they'll run it again with Logan Toms. Good job this time by Danville right there in numbers to take him down, just barely getting back to the line of scrimmage. 
Yeah, you'll see guys scraping right down the line of scrimmage. And, and, and you, against Lucas, you've, you've really got to track that ball down from behind and be active on the backside and then and then make sure your backside's covered, you know, in, in, in those flats for, for any kind of counter because they're going to they're gonna pop a, a reverse or a counter on you if they see over pursuing from the backside. Lepley, one of the first guys in among many for Danville. 8.15 left here. In the opening quarter, Lucas second down 10 from their own 44-yard line. The Cubs again at the line of scrimmage. Under center, they'll pitch it now coming around to the left side. That's Jackson across the line of scrimmage, struggles forward. Looks like he got out close to the 47, but they'll say no knee down at the 46-yard line. So just a two-yard gain for Grayson Jackson. Very good for the Danville team. What you want to put Lucas in, third and long. Yeah, third and long is a, is a, good, that's a good spot if you're Danville. Um, but, you know, one thing I've noticed here is is the majority of their run players are going to their bench. I think they've only run this way a couple times. Um, and, and we'll see which, which direction here if they decide to put the ball in the air. All right, so Lucas third and eight. The ball at their own 46-yard line. Seven and a half left. Opening quarter, we are scoreless here from Clear Fork High School. They'll bring it to the near side on the pitch. It'll go to Logan Toms. Breaks one tackle, line of scrimmage, and no further. Good job by Danville, and the first guy to grab him and drop him was Levi Lyons, the linebacker, the senior. Terrific play. He read that as soon as he cut up in there. He was right there, one of the first guys to take him down. Yep, just scraping right down the line of scrimmage. Keep the linebackers in. Nice job of getting their hands out, scraping over top. Uh, and, and getting in there at the point of attack, and it was a good good little series there. Landon Lyons also in on the stop for Danville. So they allowed a couple of first downs, but now fourth and seven, Lucas at their own 47-yard line, and they're going to punt it away. Aiden Culler will boot it, and it will have back deep. Colopy, he'll let a hit at the 30, take a Lucas roll, 25-20, and roll dented around the 18-yard line. So Lucas with a nice punt. And Danville will have their second possession start from their own 19-yard line. Scoreless again, opening quarter, 638 left. Aaron Hines alongside Chris Miller, who is in the radio booth with us tonight, teaming up with the OH Report. Glad to have you. High school Saturday night football on WMAN. Again, brought to you by the Buckeye Superstore, State Route 39 in Shelby, home of the Low Payment Kings, Buckeye Superstore. Dot com. Always great to team up with the OH Report two nights in a row. Tonight, much colder than last night's. We were in the mid-50s at kickoff. Barely at freezing here tonight. Blow it now. Danville second possession. They'll fake the run pass. And again, the ball is dropped. That nearly might be intercepted. Nearly intercepted. Right. The official's going to come in and say it hit the turf. The ball hit the receiver in the hands. And it looked like we're going to get a great replay here. It looked like one of the Lucas players almost intercepted that ball. Yeah, ball almost got caught in between, um, between one of the receivers blocking and a defender um, and then falls before falling to the ground. Went off the hands of Colopy and then John. Josh Byers was there for Danville, and one of the Cubs almost got the ball. Wouldn't that have been a wild interception? Yeah. Instead, it's harmlessly incomplete. Second and 10, Danville, 6.33 left, opening quarter. Again, no score, second and 10, deep in their own end. They'll bring a man in motion, get him the football. Colopy right side, and he is going to have close to first down yardage. See where they spot him on the far oh side. God, Went out of bounds real here. close to the first down. They brought him in motion, handed him the football off that right side. Are they going to move the chains? They are. It's a home and kitchen supply first down. Nice play for Danville. Yeah, a little jet sweep, pulled the backside guard, tried to get numbers over there, and a uh, nice positive play for him. So Danville quickly. At the 30-yard line, their own 30 will hand the football off this time and just nowhere to go right in the teeth of the middle of that Lucas Number Cub defense. Payne it was Max Payne, Payne, their stud running back, but there was tough sledding there. He got about a yard right up the middle. Yeah, and Lucas did a nice job of, of just making sure the ball changed directions. They, they were trying to go off tackle, and it wasn't there, and Max had to cut it back into that backside pursuit. Well, I, I mentioned the teeth of that Lucas defense. One of those coaches' son, Braden Spittler, stuck his nose in there, and he's a pretty good-sized kid there in the middle. Yeah, those. those those three are pretty active for, for Lucas. Second down nine, Danville in their own 31-yard line. Scoreless with 540 left here in the opening quarter. They'll pass it to the near side, off the hand of the receiver. That's three or four passes for Danville that have went off the hands of the receiver. That one incomplete off in the hands of Peyton Horn. That is the fourth ball that has been in the hands of a receiver and bounced out. They're, they're, they're going to they're gonna wish they had all those back. Well, I'll tell you what, I know it's a cold night, but right now, and as you mentioned, uh, Wessaker, the quarterbacks, put it most of them pretty much right on the money. Yeah, these have all been catchable balls, and, and it's early, and maybe 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 the coldest game of the year, but, yeah. but that's no excuse. You gotta 
you got to um, you know play the game of football in all elements. No turnovers so far, so that's a good sign. But you mentioned you're dangerous there. Third and nine. They'll hand the football off to a man in motion. Good job by Lucas. Flying up, Zach Deal will make the stop as they brought Colopy in motion. Short gain for a couple of yards up near the 33. He'll go down right there and right there, as I mentioned, the junior, Zach Deal, read it beautifully, flies up and makes the tackle. And one would think Danville is going to have to punt the football. Yeah, now, you know, let's see where Lucas lines up to catch this punt. Um, last one went way over his head, and uh, he looks like he's backing up now. Zach, or see Max Payne is going to boot it. Long one, as you mentioned. He'll sail inside the 20 to around the 17 return by Logan Toms across the 20, 25, 30, and he'll go down near the 34-yard line. So pretty nice return over the shoulder catch. Not an easy one for Logan Toms, and the Cubs will have pretty decent field position at their own 34-yard line. After the game, we'll select our Spitzer Motors game changer, our player of the game, again, courtesy of Spitzer Motors of Mansfield. And we'll hand that out coming up in tonight's post-game show. And one would think... Uh, and I know it's a long way to go. Whoever scores first, the way the defenses are playing, put a little pressure on the opposition. Yeah, you don't want to give Lucas too many opportunities offensively to, get to, to put long drives together and go down and score. Yeah, because it takes a lot of time, as you mentioned earlier, off the clock shortens the game. Lucas first and 10 at their own 34-yard line with 4.56 to play. Back to pass. They'll throw the football. It's caught. It's Grayson Jackson. He's into Danville territory. And he'll be inside the 40-yard line, down to the 39. Holman Kitchen supply first down. I'll tell you what, I've been saying it for three years. Logan Tom, or excuse me, not Logan Tom, but Smolin can throw that football. Yeah, he's got a nice arm, put it on a spot. Uh, you know, those those are the things where you've got a guy running down the field and you just don't want to overthrow him, give him a chance to catch the ball. He did a nice job of putting it in a spot where he can catch it and, and uh, move the sticks. All right, so Lucas does move those chains first and 10 at the Danville 39 yard line, their deepest drive of the night. First and 10, as I mentioned, with four and a half left scoreless here in the opening quarter. Cubs to the line, everybody set. They'll pitch the football. Zach Deal coming left side, gets a block. Good job by Danville. Blowing that play up was Ryan Lucas, the senior linebacker. Man, he destroyed that play for a loss back around the 40. Yeah, saw a window open and just and just filled it with a purpose. And uh, just, just the number of guys running down the line of scrimmage is impressive on both sides of the ball, really. How accurate these guys are inside they're getting their hands on and and uh, you, you just can't run into the backfield a lot of people think D linemen you know get into the backfield get into the backfield you do that you run by the ball uh, good defenses scrape that line of scrimmage and we're seeing two good defensive lines tonight you said the window open he closed that window in a hurry one yard loss second at 11 back at the 40 yard line for Lucas 343 left opening quarter Smolin's gonna pass he'll throw it over the middle and catching it was Corbin Toms. Unfortunately, he had one knee down, so he couldn't run after the catch. He'll get a five-yard gain to the 35-yard line, but tell you what, low pass by Smolin, but good hands there by Corbin Toms. Yeah, another 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 ball in the air with for Lucas early in the game here. Booted out, pulled a couple guards, and, and uh, threw back across his body a little bit. It's a tough throw, uh, but uh, a nice completion for him. Brings up third and... Medium, another yeah. another uh, third and medium to longish for Lucas tonight. Well, he got five on the throw, so it's third and six from the from the Danville 35 yard line. 3:02 left, opening quarter. We're scoreless. Lucas will run it right up the middle. Looks like a rugby scrum. They are pushing that pile inside the 30, down near the 29. Let's see where they stop momentum. They'll stop it at the 30. It'll be a one, actually about one yard shy of a first down. So it'll be fourth and about one as they went right up. Up the middle. I heard him say Colopy was in there on the stop, but you can't even see who's got the football when you're watching. <laughs> it just it, you know, some teams law you to sleep and throw the ball. They they kind of law you to the pitch, right? And, and power and counter and, and things outside. And then just as you're pursuing down the line, they they run that that scrum wedge play, and you and 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 uh, you know defensively go, yeah, we got to defend that too now. All right, so it is fourth and one. Lucas, the ball at the Danville 30-yard line. 2:17 left here in the opening quarter. They'll pitch it to Logan Toms, and Logan Toms will fight forward. I think he's got the first down off the left side. Yes, he does. Down near the 28-yard line. Good job by Danville. A lot of guys came up to make the stop. Josh Byers, the sophomore was one of the first guys in there, but credit Logan Toms for his coaches say, knowing where the sticks were. Yeah, he just kind of willed that ball past the uh, 
pass the sticks there and, and keep, to keep this drive alive for Lucas. All right, Holman Kitchen Supply first down, number four for the Cubs here in the opening quarter. 155 to play again, scoreless, but first and ten. Again, the football now at the Danville 28 yard line. Lucas will pitch it, coming in motion as they get the football. Short gain ahead down near the 27 yard line. Logan Toms along the carry. And I'll tell you what, Chris, you know, you coaching for so many years, the thing that I see, at least from the broadcast booth with Lucas, you got to be disciplined. You got to be in your lane, all those kind of things. If you get out of position, that's where they can break a big one. Yeah, you've got to be extremely disciplined. And coaching high school kids, you, you, you just, you know, you try to put them in the best spot and then, and then just hope that they're able to execute those jobs out there. All right, so they got a yard on that, second and nine, again from the Danville 27-yard line. They're going to fake the run, rolling out to pass. It's Smolin. He's got a man out there Good in ball. the end zone. That ball's intercepted. Danville with a terrific defensive play, and it was intercepted by the quarterback, who also plays strong safety, Walker Wessaker. The Cubs were driving down the field. They were trying to throw one behind him to Corbin Toms, and he got his head around, shoulders around, and picked that one off. Now, if you're Danville, you've just taken two possessions from Lucas. You forced him to punt once. Uh, you got an interception, uh, bringing the ball back out to the 20. They've got to put something together offensively right now. Right now is go time if you're Danville offensively. Start catching the football, start moving the sticks. Well, I'll tell you what, that ball was intercepted in the end zone by Wessaker, and that Danville defense comes up with a takeaway. It is now Danville ball at their own 20-yard line. First and 10, 102 left. Again, we are scoreless. Three wide receivers, two to the left. They'll hand the football off right up the middle, and there is just nowhere to go. Lucas right there to grab the running back Payne and slam him to the turf, and a good job there. That was Buck Arnold, the sophomore, who flew right in there. You mentioned not a big guy, 5'9", 180, but boy, he was right there. Yeah, they do a nice job of moving those guys on D-line stunts and, and um, not just, just hitting up and squeezing, but getting them into a gap and letting those smaller defensive linemen shoot gaps and, and use their speed to get back back inside and make a play. All right, so that officially was a one-yard loss back to the 19. Second and 11, 25 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. Handoff fumbled. The back able to get it back, and he's actually going to get a positive yardage out of this. That was Max Payne. He'll get out near the 25-yard line. Looked like disaster when he went to hand the ball. I don't think it was a clean handoff. He was able to get it off the turf. Logan Toms, among others, to ride him down. 10 seconds left here in the opening quarter. That may be the last play of the quarter, and Danville doesn't look like they're in a hurry, and it will be the last play of the opening quarter. After one, Danville, Lucas, we're scoreless. We're back in a minute. You're listening to high school playoff football on WFN. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Welcome back to Clear Fork High School after one quarter here in the Division 7 Regional Semifinal. We're scoreless where we were when we started. Both defenses able to stop one another. Danville had Lucas drive on him a couple of times. They forced a punt, and the last time they intercepted the ball in the end zone. Danville will start the second quarter, third and five. As they step up, nowhere to go for the quarterback. The ball's loose and got knocked out. Danville will fall on it. But, oh, man, Lucas came in, hit the quarterback, and one of the linemen able to go back there and recover the football. Trying to see who for Lucas got his hands on it. And I'll tell you what, it was Arnold again for Lucas. Buck Arnold got his hand on it. And for Danville, one of the linemen, Gavin Lepley, 
able to fall on that ball. Otherwise, Lucas yeah, has a great, was, great yeah. spot. It was odd looking because it looked like uh, looked like Walker, you know, stepped up into the pocket like he was going to take off, and then all of a sudden put his foot in the ground and, and kind of bailed out of the hole. Um, gosh, you just want if you're if you're making a decision, you put your foot in the ground to go, just go. So that ball is now going to be punted from the 17-yard line. Max Payne with a good boot, good return as Logan Toms will field the football at the 42. He'll get it into Danville territory, and he'll go down at the 46-yard line. So the Cubs have good field position to start. Quarter number two, 11-15 to play. Until halftime, we are scoreless. High school football on WMAN all season long. We are driven by the Buckeye Superstore. State Route 39 in Shelby, home of the low payment kings, BuckeyeSuperstore.com. WMAN teaming up with the OH Report. Great night here in the Valley. Cold night in the Valley. Window is open. We're, we're tough, sort of, right? <laughs> kind of. I got gloves on in layers, so we're good. All right, Cubs. We'll start their first possession. They're going to throw it again. Right side going to be caught. Grayson Jackson, 35. He'll spin and go down it around the 30-yard line. Tell you what, Jackson's been a weapon running and receiving. Good throw there by Smolin. Good spin move there around the 35 to get about five or six more yards. Yeah, just all kinds of space over there to throw the football to. Um, you know, and obviously a good throw and a good catch and, and get up the field if they're going to give you that much space out there in the boundary to take it. All right, so just over a minute gone here into quarter number two. We are scoreless. Division 7 regional semifinal. Lucas first and 10. Nose of the football at the Danville 29-yard line. Lucas was down here a moment ago. Had an interception in the end zone. Man in motion. The land of the football. Again, that's Grayson Jackson. He got drilled at about the 26-yard line. And off goes number nine, I believe Jackson. it was Walker, Walker. Wesseker. Yep, he came it. up. He's, he's making an impact defensively here, kind of coming up, putting, Ooh, his, putting his shoulder pad down and, and uh, finishing that tackle off. Yeah, Ryan Lucas, the linebacker, had him, and then Wesseker came in, and a lot of times you can see the ball jarred loose there. Good job by Jay, uh, Grayson Jackson to hang on to that. Yeah, we always say second guy second guy to the ball, take the ball. Well, I'll tell you what, Wesseker looked like he might with that hit. Good job by Jackson to hang on to the football. 10-10 left, opening quarter, scoreless. Lucas second and seven. Three-yard gain on that last play there at the Danville 26-yard line. Man in motion, fake it. Smolin's going to keep it. He's going to run up the middle. He'll get inside the 20 and down near the 19-yard line. The quarterback, maybe a lot of people don't know, can he run the football? He's real close to a first down. He has a home and kitchen supply first down. Yeah, a lot of times that's a read play where they're just kind of reading an end. And I, I don't know if, the, if if they were in particular on that play, but just kind of reading an end. And and if he jumps out on that, on that jet motion kind of action, uh, pull it up underneath. They had they had backside guard and tackle pull and really turned up the field really early. So it look, looked to be kind of a design play. Well, put him down at the 18-yard line. So Lucas first and ten at the Danville 18-yard line. 9:30 to play. Scoreless. Second quarter in motion. They'll fake it to Tobbs and the quarterback Smolin will keep it. He'll get down near the 16-yard line. So he gets couple yards on that play. Quite a bit of motion left to right and, uh, on the perimeter. And it's been it's been about a year since I've seen Lucas play. Uh, and, and and they look a little different tonight than they did they did a year ago. And kudos to their staff for you know tailoring um, play calls and offense and, and just kind of molding that to the, to a skill set. That's what uh, you do. You, you adapt to your kids, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And they've done a good job this season. Second down, eight yards to go. They'll hand it off to the man in motion. That is Logan Toms off the right side. He'll be tackled from behind at around the 10-yard line. In on that stop was Kendall Carter, the junior. If he doesn't get him, may that have been a touchdown. Yeah, I, 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 I thought for a second, though, he, he was going to take, uh, take it to the house. But Kendall Carter, has uh, he's been impressive a little bit tonight, just kind of setting that edge and, and seems to be pretty active. And, and um, you know, when, when they're running things and, and he's the point of attack, he's doing a nice job of taking on blocks. Lucas, third and three. The nose of the ball at the 11 of Danville. 8-17 to play scoreless here in the second quarter. Man in motion. They'll fake it. Smolin's going to run it up the middle. I don't think he's going to have the first down. He's going to be a little bit shy. He got inside the 10, down near the Smolin's 8. The they faked a man in motion. He ran it, and I'll tell you what, looks like from here they're about a yard shy. Yeah, that, that was just kind of a loaded counter again. We're pulling backside guard. I'll tell you what, they've run about two schemes all the way down the field outside of those couple passes, and they're just they're just hammering inside counter right now. 
Timeout, Lucas. We're going to keep it right here. This may not be a full one-minute timeout. We don't want you to miss a huge fourth and one. So we'll keep it right here after the game. We'll select who made a heck of a play, and that is from the Heck Law Offices in Giannino's Pizzeria. We'll hand it out coming up in the post-game show tonight. Giannino's Pizzeria and the Heck Law Office for our heck of a play. Jeff Heck, Jeff Stifler, they live here. They're from here. They're here to help at Heck Law Offices. Dot com. All right, so Lucas, Coach Miller, they're talking about it right now. Your bread and butter's running the ball. You only need a yard. Who do you go to? Do you, I mean, you, people will think quarterback sneak. You know, Logan Toms is good for a yard. Grayson Jackson has been good. Do you do you fake everybody and throw it? Maybe try to score. What what, what are you thinking in, in in the in the huddle right now? Gosh, I th if I'm Lucas, I'm you know, the one thing that they do really well that's that's extremely hard um, to to defend all week in practice is just that dive rugby scrum where everybody gets a push. And I, I got to think that they they feel real comfortable doing that in, in a situation even longer than fourth and one. I've seen them run that that play on, on fourth and three before with some, some level of success. All right, so here we go. Fourth and one for Lucas. The ball at the Danville nine yard line. Lucas will pack it in at the line of scrimmage. Danville trying to come up with another big stop on defense. Lucas ready, and they'll keep it with the quarterback. And a penalty marker will come in from behind. Was Lucas moving? Yes. Ball start on Lucas. I believe it was the center. Okay, all right. Travis Berardi, our producer here in the booth, watching closely, says somebody on that line, believe it was the center, just nudged a little. He yeah, might, I'll tell you what. He might, he, he, it looks like he was leaning forward before the ball moved. Um, typically, he, typically the center doesn't get called uh, for that because when the ball moves, the play starts. But it looked like he was just kind of a little overzealous there leaning forward. Well, here we go. Now the Cubs, one would think on fourth and six, are going to attempt a field goal. Aiden Culler is out. This will be put down at the 22-yard line. It'll be a 32-yard attempt. I saw this kid hit about a 50-yarder. I think you might have been there with me yeah, that, last year. Yeah, that was an impressive yeah. kick. And that went over the over the hill down and it probably landed somewhere in Mansfield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's got the wind at his back with 746 to play, and everything is big in a playoff game, especially a scoreless game about halfway through the second quarter. Yeah, you take the points when you can get them in, the, in situations like this. So Lucas right now is it everybody's out there getting ready. We got we're holding up play for just a moment. Not exactly sure what we're holding up for, but I think we're Ready to roll now. Aiden Culler, as I mentioned, has a big leg, trying to give the Cubs the lead. 7.46, excuse me, they put two seconds back on. 7.48 to play. There's the kick on the way, and that baby is good. He drills it through. We'll take a break. Lucas, three. Danville, nothing. Back in a minute, you're listening to high school playoff football on WMAN. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Aaron Hines and Chris Miller, WMAN OH report with you tonight from the Clear Fork Valley after the Cubs boot one up and through by Aiden Culler. Kickoff going to be returned by Peyton Horn there of Danville. He'll get it out to the 30-yard line and extra points, field goals all season long. They're up and good, just like it's a good idea to stop by Mill Iron Auto Parts. State Route 39 between Mansfield and Shelby. You'll receive top dollar for your scrap vehicle. Mill Iron supporting local 
high school athletes. And I'll tell you what, that Aiden Culler kick would have been good from a lot further than 32. That was a big time boot. Three nothing Cubs, Danville takes over. They hand it off, Max Payne, he's got some room. Block left side, 35, 40, 45, midfield. He'll be tackled right there. A 20 yard burst, a home and catch it, supply first down. And that's what I expected to see from Max Payne. Oh, it was a really soft edge there. Uh, looked like Josh Byers came down and uh, cracked um, the uh, the force player, kind of allowing that, that corner to be soft and Max to turn that corner for, for a nice gain. So yep. nice block there, Josh. I had, Saw Max Payne play. I just read the numbers, and I guess what a lot of people have seen a lot. Huge gain, 20 yards, midfield. Danville in business, first and 10, trailing 3-0. They'll bring a man in motion. They'll hand him the football. That's Colopy trying to get the corner. Lucas doing a good job. He's going to get some forward progress. Go down around the 47. Aiden Culler was there. Logan Toms came up. Also, multiple guys over there as well. Ryan Caudill and Dylan Page. So Lucas was there in numbers, but they get about three yards on first down. Second and seven. Danville again there at the Lucas. 47-yard line, trailing 3 nothing. 6.45 to play here in the second quarter. Division 7 regional semifinal. Both of these teams very familiar with deep playoff runs. Danville, four wide receivers, three to the left. Wessaker in the gun, he'll hand it to Max Payne, left side, and he'll get inside the 45 and down near the 43. So, 11, Max, Payne, Max Payne, Payne was slowed down that time by Keaton Day, one of the defensive linemen number there one, for Lucas, but I'll tell you what, Danville moving the ball much better on this drive. It looks like they've gone to some, some kind of maybe man on zone schemes where they, they haven't been pulling uh, anybody from the backside the last couple plays just kind of staying big on big and trying to climb to the second level and really in tightening that slot receiver down and getting him involved in a, in a kick uh, block or, 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 or a crack block where, where the receiver kind of comes down and, and, and allows, uh, allows a seam for the running back. All right, so Danville's going to burn a timeout. We'll take a quick timeout too and be back. You're listening to High School Football on WMAN. Nowadays, you've got enough things to worry about. Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. At Spitzer, our world revolves around Back here at the Clear Fork Corral while they are in break, WA Man. Let's thank our sponsors, TMS Plus, Ohio Valley Manufacturing, Spitzer Motors, Scout Construction, LLC, Danville Feed and Supply, Knox Community Hospital, the Killbuck Savings Bank, and Mechanics Bank. Let's head it back to the radio, guys. Back at the Colt Corral, Danville with a big third and three out of the timeout. They will run the football up the middle and a good job by the running back inside the 40 and down near the 38 yard line. And Max Payne has a home and kitchen supply first down. The coach takes a timeout, they execute. Coach Miller, that's what you like, right? Yeah, that, at that time they ran a wide trap, which they had, they had quite a bit of success last week against Hillsdale running, running that play right there where it kind of looks like it looks like jet sweep, and then um, here comes a guard, and he's kicking out the end, and the back puts his foot in the ground and gets up inside. So um, it's a nice-looking football play here. They're, they're empty. Danville, as you mentioned, five wide receivers as they bring a man in motion now on first and 10 at the Lucas 38-yard line. Wesserker's going to wind up, throw a pass right side. Oh, and it's dropped. He had a man at around the seven-yard line. He turned around, got his hands on it, and dropped it. That was Caleb Lucas, the sophomore. Boy, he'd love to have that one back. What a well-placed ball. The you know the, the we, we call that kind of he's capped, right? The, 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 the defensive back is over top of that deep route. So the quarterback throws the ball short to the back shoulder because he's capped and, and gave him a great opportunity to catch the ball. And it's not like that might be six drops tonight. Yeah, I was going to say it's more than a handful now. You're using a second hand. Danville's had some opportunities. 
They have had a nice drive going here, second and 10. The ball at the Lucas 38-yard line. They trail 3-0, just over five to play until halftime. They'll hand the football up, different back this time. And he'll work his way down near the 30-yard line. So I'm sorry, no, it was Max Payne. Excuse me, man, it was Max Payne with the football. Down near the 30, so he doesn't have a first down. But I'll tell you what, running right through tacklers, and it took about four Cubs to drag him to the turf. Yeah, they were in power away from the motion. Just kind of seeing a lot of times uh, teams will motion those guys in and send them back just to see if they're in man coverage or zone coverage. Uh, probably setting something up here um, in the future here, just kind of get, getting a peek as to what the defense is doing with those motions. Third and two Danville. The ball at the Lucas 30-yard line. Again, late stages, second quarter. Danville down 3-0. They'll hand it again to Max Payne, trying to work his way, but he's not going to have a first down. Lucas right there to greet him just inside the 30 at the 29. Good job by the Cubs. And one of the first guys, two guys up off the bottom of the pile, Braden Spittler. And also Buck Arnold, both of those guys involved in the stop and fourth and about a yard and one would think the Blue Devils are going to go for it you, here, right? You go for it right here, fourth and one, uh, playoff football. You're down three, clock's running down in the first half. There's four minutes left. Um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is a big moment right here. Fourth and one, Danville, the nose of the football at the Lucas 29-yard line, 3.54 to go until halftime, 3 nothing, Lucas. The Cubs. Ready to try and stop him. Danville trying to get the first down. I don't know if he's going to have it. They hand it to Max Payne. Lucas right there, and I think the Cubs may have stopped him. Number 11, Payne, the ball for Danville. Daniel uh, Hawkins, Hawkins Smith. Smith, number Hawkins 30. Smith came in unblocked, uh, did a great job of just broom sticking him, right? It, it, lowering your level, Hawkins buzzing Smith your feet, getting heavy on the body, Lucas and, and stopping them stop. forward the momentum of the, of the running back. That's a difficult thing to do inside of one yard. And they have stopped him. Daniel Hawkinsmith, as you mentioned, on fourth and one. You mentioned he comes in there unblocked and he grabbed Max Payne. Then he got some help from others. And Lucas in that defense, they bend, but they didn't break on that one. And they'll take over. And that is a big play in this football game. Lucas, with 3.43 to go until halftime, has a 3 nothing lead on the Danville Blue Devils. Very nice crowd here tonight in the Valley. Got some great views here from the OH report. They're doing a great job. Cameras all over the place. It's our pylon cam. I, <laughs> it does I look like a pylon cam. I like cam. the pylon it cam. It looks like a camera sitting on the pylon. Yeah. That makes it a pylon cam. Absolutely. All right, whatever. As long as it's near the pylon, <laughs> I like there it. There he is. All right. First down and 10. Lucas will hand the football off again from the 29, their own 29, sweeping right side. That is junior Logan Toms. Toms will work his way out near the 34, so give him close to five yards on that carry. Chris, I, I know for Lucas, they're not really a maybe score quick kind of offense. They got a little under three and a half. If they were able to go down, let's say get a touchdown, boy, how big would that be? Yeah, they're, they're, they're right now thinking we're gonna take every second off that clock and go, and go into halftime possessing the ball. Um, that's gonna be their MO here and they're gonna craft a drive that, that, that that's tailored to keep the football. Second down, they're gonna throw the football. Got a receiver out there, gonna overthrow him. That was Grayson Jackson down that right side and overthrown that time by the quarterback Smolin incomplete, but he had a step on it, but he did have some help there coming yeah, from the secondary. Just as I said that, they, they threw all verts into, <laughs> into, into, into the sideline. Good Spittler you know, heard you, right? They, yeah, they, they, they threw all verts, took a shot here. Um, uh, we'll see here what they dial up and how they attack the, the remainder of this of this possession here. Well, it's third and five for Lucas. Again, the nose of the football at their own 34-yard line. Three-nothing Lucas, and even three to play until halftime. Division seven regional semifinal. Lucas and Danville, they'll double handoff here. Logan Toms, they'll hand it off to another back. Jackson, he jumps over a man at the line. 40, midfield, spin move still on his feet. Danville territory to the 46-yard line. A heck of a play by Grayson Jackson. What an individual effort. I love this double handoff. Uh, it's counter, double handoff. There he's in the hole. Jumps over top of a pile of defenders uh, to continue that run down the field. What a, and that's why they threw it on, on second down, because they're coming back to that on third and five. I'll tell you what, incredible play by Grayson Jackson. Great replays, by the way. By the OH report, and looks like he's a little shaken up. Yeah, hope hope he's all I right. Hope he's, he's okay. A, he's had a nice night. Yeah, 
Uh, certainly don't want to see him. I think he may uh, have hit his like hand. Yeah, he may have hit his hand when he came to maybe on a helmet or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah it looks like the hand. All right, so hopefully he'll be okay to come back in for the Cubs here in the near future. He had a great first half. All right, so here we go. Luke is first and 10. The nose of the ball now at the Danville 46-yard line. 3 nothing. Lucas. They'll pitch it to the near side. This is Logan. No, I'm sorry. This is Zach Deal. Zach Deal now into the game carrying the ball. He'll get down near the 40-yard line. So six yards on that run by Zach Deal, the junior. You're hearing a lot of names for the Cubs carrying the football. And Chris all have had success. Yeah, but they just, they, it's like they're clones of each other. They just, they, they run hard. They stay low. They keep their feet moving and, and get just fight for every yard they get, that they get. Levi Lyons on the stop there for Danville. Two minutes to play here in the second quarter. 3 nothing. Lucas, second and four from the Danville 40-yard line. Smolin's going to throw it this time. Right side, got a man out there, caught deal. Inside the 30, 25. Zach breaks a tackle inside the 20. He'll be tackled to the turf and around the 17-yard line. Another receiver, this again to the junior, Zach Deal, who got there behind Payne. Made a nice nifty move there, broke a tackle, and the Cubs in business under two to play to the half. That running game just draws you in, draws you in, draws you in, and, and, and it looks like Max was kind of a victim of that draw in, and he just, he just delayed, just hesitated just enough. Uh, didn't trust his eyes and see that receiver run into the flats. All right, so Lucas. Holman Kitchen Supply first down, first and 10 at the Danville 17-yard line. Hang on, penalty marker will fly right as the ball was snapped, and I think somebody may have moved for the Cubs. We'll get the call here. Yes, ball start on Lucas. So not what Coach Spittler wanted. As you get it first and 10 at the 17-yard line, a 128 to play until the half, and you get a penalty to move yourself backwards. Cubs, again, trying to appear in their fifth regional title in the last eight years with a win tonight. Danville was to win. It would be their ninth trip in school history. Lucas, second and long, back to pass. They're going to throw it left side. Going to be caught to the near side. And they'll haul it in at around the nine-yard line. Let's see where he officially steps out of bounds. Yes, that was Grayson Jackson on the catch. Put him down at the nine. So I'll tell you what, they're real close to it. They needed to get down to around the seven yard line so it's second and just a couple. So you have the penalty, no problem. Yeah, I mean, it was boot into the boot into the sideline, catch the ball on the sideline. And they got two timeouts, so it's not really like they've got to throw the ball to the, to the sideline and get out of bounds. They've got plenty of time, as a matter of fact, I would think they'd want to keep the clock and, and, and just possess the ball as, as the half expires. There's second down and about wide two. Got open. a man wide, wide open. open. Zach Deal right side caught it into the end zone. Nine-yard touchdown throw and catch. They're a running machine, but Andrew Smullen says, guess what, boys? We can pass, too. Zach Deal scores, and the Cubs go up 9 nothing with a point after that, coming up. That young man had a great drive. Carried the ball a couple times, a couple, couple key catches, and, and obviously capped it off with a touchdown here. All right, again, tell you what, I, I think I will echo what you said a moment ago. You think, Lucas, run, 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 and there's that pass. Yeah, they just they, I mean, that they, they kind of lined up in a passing formation really there, and it and, uh, looks like maybe there was some coverage confusion there, whether whether uh, there was nobody in the flats or, or on that man, or I'm not sure what, what coverage they were running there, but he was kind of running free. Point after up, and just like Miller and Auto Parts, Aiden Color is good. We'll take a break. One minute to play until halftime. Lucas 10, Danville nothing. Back in a minute. You're listening to High School Football on WMAN. Nowadays, you've got enough things to worry about. Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. At Spitzer, our world revolves around Back here at the Colt Corral is the Lucas Cubs out to a 10-0 lead. We want to we want to welcome you back in here on the OH Report and thank Aaron Hines and Chris Miller of WMAN. Great job so far on the call. But make sure to stay tuned for the halftime show 
brought to you by TMS Plus. We'll have the halftime band show, and the boys will have some stats and much more. So stay tuned in a minute of game time. But let's head it back to the WMAM crew with their call of the last one minute. Welcome back to the Colt Corral, Clear Fork High School, Division 7 Regional Semifinal, Lucas 10, Danville nothing. As Lucas with an eight yard touchdown throw and catch, Smolin to Zach Deal, point after good a moment ago. And kickoff gonna be fielded by Caden Colopy across the 30, 35, and he'll hit the turf at around the 37 yard line. Again, all of our extra points up and always good, just like it's always a good idea to stop by Mill Iron Auto Parts. Day round 39 between Mansfield and Shelby. You'll receive top dollar for your scrap vehicle. Mill Iron supporting local high school athletes. Aaron Hines joined tonight with coach Chris Miller in the radio booth tonight. Teaming up with the OH Report, glad to have you. Saturday night, high school playoff football, WMAN, iHeartRadio, OH Report, a great team here in the throughout the high school football season. And Danville's gonna try and get something going before halftime. They'll throw it quickly, gonna be caught by Peyton Horn. He'll get into the sideline and get out of bounds. Line of scrimmage was the 37, so it's a pass of 12 yards to the 49. Holman Kitchen Supply first down. Chris, they got to go in a hurry. 49 seconds to play until the break. Yeah, you've got time. You've got 49 seconds. You've got two timeouts. You got the ball around the 50 yard line. You just got to catch the ball, uh, which they did there and got out of bounds. Five wide receivers, three to the left, two to the right. They'll bring a man in motion. They'll hand him the football. He'll get to midfield. It's Colopy. He'll get knocked out of bounds. Good job by Lucas. Logan Toms came flying up. They'll say he steps out where? I think around the 48, yes, 48 yard line. He'll get about three. The good news for Danville, the clock stops. And the clock stops, he gets out of bounds. That's why you run jet, jet to the short side of the field in that situation if you're gonna run the ball. And, and it looks like maybe only four seconds come off the clock. Yeah, 45 seconds to play until halftime. Lucas 10, Danville nothing. Division seven, regional semifinal. Lucas gets the, as you, if you don't realize, Lucas got that ball. Uh, Actually didn't get it first, Danville did. So Lucas will get the ball to start the third quarter. So this would be big if Danville can score. They're gonna throw the football on second down. They'll throw it to Colopy on the right side, a little high and into the sideline. Out of bounds, incomplete. Bringing up third down for Danville and about seven yards to go from the Lucas 48 yard line. So as I mentioned, Lucas gets the ball to start the third quarter. And Travis has us a live look in here on the OH Report. Crestview up 6-0 second quarter in that game in Medina against Columbia Station. So right now, two Richland County schools up in the first half, but a long way to go. Third down and long, quick pass to the near side, caught by Colopy. And Colopy is going to get into the sideline where he's taken out of bounds at around the 43-yard line of Lucas. Yeah, they, they, they had success running that little now screen um, last week and it looks like they maybe got a got away with what could have been a block in the back here in the boundary uh, but get, gets out of bounds clock stops 35 seconds left and and uh, brings up a fourth down here for you Aaron. all right fourth down and two Danville the ball at the Lucas 43 yard line 35 seconds to play until halftime Danville trailing Lucas 10 nothing they have two timeouts but guess what you got to move the chains or those timeouts aren't going to mean anything. Three wide receivers left, one to the right. Quarterback Wesserker is going to roll, going to throw it left side. Got it to Colopy, got it first down. Inside the 40, he'll scamper out of bounds at around the 36-yard line. So the Blue Devils convert when they need it. Clock stops out of bounds, 29 seconds to play. I like that play call. Um, you know, you've, you've got, I know it feels like you don't have time, but, but you do with crafty play calling like that. Just get the first down, move the sticks, get out of bounds, reset the chains. Now we're on the 37-yard line. And, and what, a, what a stingy Lucas defense we're seeing tonight. They just, they just won't go away. They're just not opening windows. As you mentioned, first and 10 at the Lucas 37-yard line, 29 seconds to play until halftime. Wessiger's gonna wind up, throw one down the middle. That ball nearly caught. Knocked away by one of the Cubs at around the six yard line. There was a lot of white jerseys back there, incomplete with 21 seconds to play. Travis has the replay queued up and who got their paw in there for the Lucas Cubs? It was Aiden Culler. 
He can boot field goals and knock that balls away in the secondary. Out, 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 That's a big knock away right there. That was a big play defensively. Yeah, that, that puts him inside the five yard line with 20 seconds left if that's complete. So what a what nice defensive play. Those balls are 50-50 in the air Tell like what, that. And everybody's holding their breath, including the guys holding the clipboards. Wesseker has been pretty accurate throwing the ball. Yeah, he really has. He's had a nice, so is Smolin. He's yeah. put the ball on the, on the money a number of times. Yeah, Smolin's not been bad, right? Mm -hmm. Second and 10, pressure, pressure is on and he is gonna get away and throw, but nobody is over over on the near side as he was in hot pursuit. Daniel Hawkinsmith, like he was shot out of a cannon, came flying to the quarterback, back at around the 47 yard line. Are they talking about, are you talking about a penalty because there was no receiver intentional grounding? Are you talking about that? The, the, the grounding rule changed this year and um, you know, I, I I don't think that's a grounding penalty. He's out of the box. You yeah. can throw, you can throw it into right. the sideline. Uh, where in years past that that would have been right because you think about the high school college and pro level some of the the penalties and rules are different yeah, so they, the committee looks at those things every year and, and and tweaks them and changes them but i think that's the right call he's out of the pocket and i'll tell you what how about daniel hawkinsmith in the first half he's been good Boy, too yeah, absolutely he's had a nice nice second quarter here right. on both sides of the ball 14 seconds to play until halftime third and 10 danville in lucas territory they'll throw the football nearly intercepted it's it'll fall incomplete at around the 15 yard line. It was Corbin Toms who skied to try and grab that ball. And it was too high and probably luckily for Wessaker it was too high because that ball would have been intercepted. Yeah, if that ball hadn't sailed out of bounds, it'd be Lucas Ball. So it is fourth down and 10 for Danville. Nine seconds to play until halftime. They have the football at the Lucas 37 yard line. Can that Cub defense come up with one more stop? wesseker has got a good arm. Can he get 10 yards? They got some timeouts. Maybe have a chance at a field goal or throw it into the end zone. We'll see. It looks like Lucas is going to sit back defensively and just defend and not bring any pressure. So he's going to have time. He'll drop back and pass. Throw it over the middle. Hits his receiver in the hands. One of the Cubs not able to intercept the ball, but it doesn't matter. It'll fall incomplete with four seconds to play until halftime. And Danville will turn it over on downs. It hit Josh Byers, the tight end, in the hands. Hands, not able to bring it in, and the Cubs can take a knee and head to the locker room with a 10-0 lead. Yeah, that ball would have been short of the sticks anyway had yeah. it been caught and um, probably probably would have been running out of time anyway. All right, so as you mentioned, Lucas will huddle up to the line of scrimmage. Everybody will pack in with four seconds to play until halftime, 37-yard line, their own 37. Andrew Smullen will take a knee. And we'll head to halftime where the Lucas Cubs lead the Danville Blue Devils 10 to nothing. A packed house here at the Colt Corral and Clear Fork High School. The Division 7 Regional Semifinal has Lucas on top at the half 10 to nothing. Real quick, Chris, we're going to head to the break, but just your quick thoughts on the first half. Got to be impressed, A, with the way both teams played. But I think for me... You, you look at Lucas run that football, but the Cubs can throw it too. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've made an effort. Like I said, how much they've changed since I saw them last, but they made an effort, and, and uh, Andrew Smolin throwing a football and, and press tonight, uh, putting the ball on the money, and, and who I thought had a nice first half. If somebody's not even up here on the offensive starter list is, Zach. is, is yeah, how do you say his last name? Zach Deal. Zach Deal. Zach Deal yep. had a nice, he caught, caught a touchdown pass, caught another ball to kind of keep the uh, – Keep the chains moving. Daniel Hockettsmith, Grayson Jackson. Yeah, all those guys. They just run the ball hard, and, 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 and you know, they play football with, with a lot of intensity and, and finish plays, and that's, that's, uh, that's, that's the difference right now. All right, we're headed to halftime. I believe the OH Report will probably have some band action coming up at halftime. We're going to preview now the OSU Alumni the Club Buckeye Bash yeah. coming up here in a little over a week. We got that uh, interview here coming at the half. Stay tuned for that. We'll be back, run down some first half numbers, and get you ready for the second half. Once again, halftime, Division 7 Regional Semifinal. It's Lucas 10, Danville nothing. We'll take a break. You're listening to High School Playoff Football on WMA. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. 
We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. If you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Nowadays, you've got enough things to worry about. Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. At Spitzer, our world revolves around You've got enough things to do. Second selection, we are featuring Earth, Wind, and Fire's 1978 chart topping single, which posed the question Do you remember the 21st night of September? like to thank you all for coming out tonight and give another round of applause for the 2022 Lucas Cups marching band.
like I'm gonna pee my pants.
Gordon, you're screwing our name tonight. The devil better have a scene. Flash it up light with back streets larger than light. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Nowadays, you've got enough things to worry about. 
Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. It is halftime here at the Colt Corral in the TMS Plus halftime show. Lucas with the 10-0 lead over the Danville Blue Devils in this rivalry matchup to determine who will play for a regional championship in Division 7 Region 25. Travis Berari back here. The boys at WMAN doing an amazing job tonight. We'll get back to them here in about a minute and a half. But right now, let's thank our sponsors for allowing you to watch this regional semifinal Live and free, TMS Plus, digital marketing for local businesses, Ohio Valley Manufacturing, heavy gauge stamping and precision blanking services, hiring now. Spitzer Motors, home of the Spitzer Shield, shielding you from the unexpected on all purchases. Order a new vehicle exactly the way you want it, even if it's not in stock. Scout Construction LLC, with more than a decade of businesses, you can trust Scout Construction with your roofing and siding needs. Call Scout Construction for more information. 419-989-7240. Danville Feed and Supply, proudly serving the community for over 50 years. Come visit us in our new store. Knox Community Hospital, in the community for the community. The Killbuck Savings Bank, community banking. It's what we do. It's who we are every single day. And Mechanics Bank, that's better. Thank you all for allowing this stream to be live and free on the OH Report, and we see all you out there. Continue to comment. I'll get you on the fan zone tonight. We have almost 700 people watching at halftime. We've peaked out at about 1,000, so thank you, everybody. Keep it up. We also have three other games, and make sure to tune in. Midnight tonight, the final episode of the Friday Night Pigskin. We'll have all the scores from around the area, the highlights, and much more coming up at midnight. But let's throw it back to Aaron Hines and Chris Miller for the halftime show. Welcome back to the Colt Corral and Clear Fork High School where it is halftime and it's the Division 7 Regional Semifinal and the Lucas Cubs have a 10-0 lead on the Danville Blue Devils as we welcome you back inside the Wendy's broadcast booth. Aaron Hines, Chris Miller, WMAN teaming up with the OH Report. Glad to have you on a frigid Saturday night. Some snow flurries, solid accumulation on the grass today and Tell you what, uh, this feels, Chris, like November football weather. Two physical football teams. And as we're here at the break, we got some numbers. Let's run them down here. 10 nothing is the Lucas lead. And you look at it, Chris, eight first downs for Lucas. I'm going to let you talk about some of these five first downs for Danville. But when you look at it, what stat jumps out at you? I believe it's double sevens in the passing department for the Cubs, right? Yeah, we were, we were just talking about that not that long ago. I mean, they, they've had some success throwing the ball underneath and getting the ball uh, you know, in the hands of, of, of receivers and the flats and so forth and turn up the field and get so that 77 yards passing uh, kind of pops out to me in a Lucas football game for 166 total offensively. Um, and then, and then uh, you know, from, from a Danville standpoint, 23 yards passing, uh, I, I wonder how many yards they left out there um, with, with, you know, just kind of couldn't connect. In, in the passing game, especially early out, early on. So, you know, I'm trying to think like, you know, like a coach. If I'm going into, if I'm going into halftime right now, and I'm Lucas, and you, and you kind of reflect, what did we do well offensively? Um, you know, they they moved the ball down the field, you know, at times, and kind of capped those drives off in the air. And and so if I'm Danville, I'm I'm kind of taking a look at that. Are we going to adjust? You know, when they jump into those spread uh, formations. It's, I, I was telling you at halftime, it's, it's really tough to play Lucas in man-to-man -man coverage because DB's eyes are on their receivers and you kind of lose them in run support. Um, and then, you know, because they're playing a zone, um, you know, and all eyes are in the backfield trying to stop that run, they, they get a little nosy and then, and then they slide out and they, and they complete those passes in the flat. So I just wonder if Danville will, you know, kind of defensively do some things on the back end coverage wise to account for, for, for what Lucas is doing well offensively. And then if I'm Danville, I, I like my jet trap series right now. Um, spread them out, run the football, um, pull a guard, kick the end, tell, tell that guy to cut up inside or take the edge. And that, that seems to be the series 
if I'm Danville that's working a little bit. And so if I'm Lucas, you know, gosh, there's zero on the scoreboard. But I tell you what, um, there's always things you can kind of fix and, and get a little better at doing. And, and that's probably the, the one thing that I would – make an adjustment for if I'm Lucas at halftime. Well, the Cubs have a 10-0 lead. How did they get there? Well, let's give you the scoring summary. First quarter, real easy. Nobody scored in the first quarter. Second quarter, Lucas able to score at the 743 mark on a 32-yard field goal from Aiden Cullard that would have been good from 45 or 50. It was a boot up and good. 3-0 Cubs. Then, with a minute to play until halftime, it was quarterback Andrew Smullen, who you heard Chris talk about is thrown for 77 yards he hooked up with Zach Deal who had a nice first half on an eight yard touchdown pass in he goes Aiden Cullors point after was good and that gave Lucas a 10-0 lead and that's where we are at halftime 10-0 Lucas and as we get ready for the third quarter you and I quickly talked about this off the air let's talk about it on the air so quarterback Andrew Smullins played well we knew about Logan Toms coming in and, and Logan has played very well on both sides of the ball but Grayson Jackson has played well you, we talked about Zach Deal a moment ago you kind of go up and down the roster you talked to me about Daniel Hawkinsmith you have a lot of guys on this Lucas team who have stepped up and played well and that's what it takes to win a playoff game it's not just your main guys it's everybody they do a great job of sharing the ball um you know there's not one featured back in the lucas offense there's usually a guy that's got more running you know rushing yards than than another i mean that's a natural thing for any football team right but they just do a great job of of, of kind of a that next man up mentality who's who's the next guy in throw him in there and and it just is a testament to the schemes the preparation uh you know that they that they that they approach with the you know with the scheme uh on a weekly basis and just this is what we do we do we're going to do it really well we're going to have adjustments built into our system and uh we're just going to throw um you know this guy in there that time and he's going to he's going to have success because because it's residual at that point for lucas yeah the system has just been incredible under coach spitler in its 14th year 10 nothing lucas we're ready to start the third quarter remember the cubs are receiving the football with a 10 nothing lead and the ball will be fielded low Boy, I don't know and, about and that. And I'll tell you what, I, I don't, don't think his knee hit. I, I think his wrist may have hit the ground, but I don't know. I, mean, I want to take a second look here because it, it kind of looked like he went down to scoop the ball. Are they going to say his knee hit the ground, Travis? Yeah, it's hard to oh, see that, wow. that trail knee, the right knee from this angle is, is difficult to see, but I don't know. I'll tell you what, that, that, that is a break for Danville because on that return, he would have been across the 20 and who knows how further. Instead, Lucas will now start. They'll say the knee was down when he fielded the ball at his own 13-yard line. So here we go. Cubs first and 10 from their own 13 as we start the third quarter. They'll pitch it to Logan Toms up the middle, running right through the middle of that Blue Devil defense across the line of scrimmage, 15, and out near the 20-yard line as he runs right through the trenches for a nice chunk of about seven yards on first down starting back with their bread and butter a little toss play pulling guys kicking getting inside just going to lean on you here a little bit uh, another another run into their bench all right they're, they're, let's they'll be curious to see how how often they run to their bench in this drive ryan lucas the linebacker on the stop for danville second and three lucas from their own 20 yard line leading 10 nothing early stages here of quarter number three they'll pitch again to logan towns work his way again off that left side out near the 23 he's very close to a first down the official says he's got the first down move the chains home and kitchen supply first down number 51 gavin lepley making the at his first down number nine and I heard him say it was Lepley on the stop there for Danville. But two plays for the Cubs, two runs, Logan Toms, and they move the chains. That's what Coach Spittler wants. 10 nothing lead, clock running, move the chains. Yeah, this is why Coach Spittler is Coach Spittler. We talked about having a little success in the air, and here they come back out and they're running the football. Good job there by Danville as they pitch it to the near side. Coming back, Grayson Jackson upended by Levi Lyons, the senior linebacker. And the linebackers for Danville, that's the key to their defense. That leads them and a good job right there by one of their linebackers. Yeah, they've got to be running free. And if, if they've got guys in their face, and Lucas does a great job offensively of getting of just putting people in the face of the linebacker. So if linebackers are running free, um, and if linebackers are, are being called with making tackles here, that's, it's a good play for them. Second and nine from their own 24. Lucas, they'll pitch it right side, trying to sweep it or wide to the right as Logan Toms up near the 30-yard line. Good job there. He gets about six yards. This will bring up third down and manageable here for the Lucas Cubs. Good job on the stop. That was Carter, uh, number 55, Kendall Carter, defensive end. 
6'2", 240, chasing him down. When that ball goes outside, it almost looks like a punt return, like they're building a wall <laughs> out there, and they're just trying to get outside of the wall. Well, the Lucas Cubs have it third and four. The ball at their own 29-yard line, 947 to play here in the third quarter. 10-0 Lucas, the pitch to Logan Times, trying to build that wall, leaps over a guy. 35-yard line, home and kitchen supply first down. They'll be rode into the sideline across the 40. The second Cub to hurdle a defender. And Logan Times says, Grayson Jackson, I can do that too. Yeah, you, you, had, a, you had the force player come in and try to try to displace the football, which is, which is how you defend that. Uh, but there, there's just nobody outside of that uh, to make that tackle. What a great, what a great run there! Uh, once again, into their bench. Tell you what, when you're running and you just leap, that that's just instant. You see that? You you know you time that perfectly. The Cubs do it. And a Holman Kitchens apply first down to the 40-yard line. First and 10, Lucas. Again, their own 40-yard line. They pack it in at the line of scrimmage. Leading 10-0. Double, Double handoff. handoff. This will go to Logan Toms. He'll be met and drilled by Wessaker. Kind of rolls Logan off Logan him Logan at Tom. the 44, near the 45. But they'll say he is down at the 44-yard line. Good tackle again by the strong safety, Wessaker, who also doubles as the quarterback. But another four-yard gain. And uh, I'll use an Eric Will term with Lucas. Three, four, five-yard runs. He always calls it death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it, it's it's demoralizing as it takes place over over a, a, a four and a half minute drive. You just can't seem to get off the field. Lucas, second down, six yards to go. They'll hand the football off again. The back, Grayson Jackson at first looked like he wasn't going to get anything. Breaks a tackle, gets a couple yards across the 45 out Jackson near the 46-yard line. Lucas. So good second effort there by Grayson Jackson, able to break the tackle. And then good job by multiple guys, Colopy, Beckett, and others come in to stop him at about the 47. All right, Chris, third and three here for Lucas. This is the, You feel pretty good if you're Lucas. Run the ball. Run the ball. Coach Spittler will see what he dials up with 8.15 to play on third and three here in the third quarter. They'll sweep it right side, and Toms will have it. That's Logan into Danville territory. Holman Kitchen supply first down, down to the 47-yard line, and Logan Toms has been a monster on this drive so far. It looks like almost he was being a little patient there. You know, on a, on a third, it kind of tells me they're they're going forward on fourth. Uh, when the ball goes outside like that, as, as, as much success as they've had on that power counterplay inside a tackle, um, you know, in years past, Lucas uh, pitching the ball would be like an equivalent of somebody throwing the football, right? It's a, uh, so, you know, he's had good patience there and let that play develop in front of his face. All right. High school football driven by the Buckeye Superstore. State Route 39 in Shelby, home of the low payment kings, BuckeyeSuperstore.com. Lucas first and 10, the ball at the 47-yard line of Danville as they'll run the football this time, and the back will get – a couple of yards, making guys miss down near the 44. As Daniel Hawkinsmith that time ran the football, kind of shook loose on one guy, and then about five or six blue jerseys grab him for a short gain. Just a, a, a quick quick hitter, dive up the middle. Can't, couldn't tell if it was a trap or, or just kind of a wedge play, but... Uh, you know, like I said, they've been left to right, left to right, outside, and then and then uh, and then boom, they hit you with with that quick hitter uh, up the middle. Just keep you honest inside. All right, so give him three yards for Daniel Hawkinsmith. Lucas, second down, seven. Again, the football now at the Danville 44-yard line. Seven to play here in the third. Lucas up 10-0 as they'll hand the football off. And good job by Danville right in the middle. Just nowhere to go for the running back. That was Daniel Hawkinsmith again. But right there in the middle of that Danville defense, saw number 54 fly in. That was Levi Lyons, the linebacker, the senior, to take him down. You know, Jordan King did a nice job of just kind of bear crawling in there and, and not getting pushed off the line of scrimmage that allows guys to kind of flow and make plays. Chris, that's a one-yard gain, so a good job there for Danville. Third down, six yards to go, Lucas. Ball at the Danville 43, 10-0 Lucas, 6.25 to play in the third. Division 7 regional semifinal from a Pat Colt Corral at Clear Fork High School. Smullen, will he throw? Back to pass, got some time, going to load up, going to fire one right side, got a receiver out there, he caught it! Into the end zone, touchdown Lucas Cubs. Zach Deal on a bomb, 43 yards. Andrew Smolin flexing the muscles with that passing game. I saw that kind of develop as a wheel route. They just switched and exchanged this. Uh, they're playing zone defense because the corner stayed outside. But off, that's that's tough to do. You've got you've got to squeeze the ball, squeeze the sideline, look and lean, and try to replace that receiver while your eyes are inside. Uh, he just kind of trailed away from the receiver, could, couldn't feel him, 
ball slides in there. Great pass, great catch. Um, uh, touchdown, Lucas. By the way, the hookup of the night, Smolin to deal. There it is They again. have them both. There touchdown passes, in eight yards air. and 43 through the, the air. air. You are hearing and watching correctly. The Cubs, they're a ground machine, but tonight the air game has been big time. Aiden Cull at the point after. It's on the way, and just like Mill Iron Auto Parts, it is good. We'll step aside. 6-11 to play in the third. Lucas 17, Danville nothing. Back in a minute, you're listening to High School Playoff Football on WMAN. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. Seventeen nothing, Lucas. Third quarter, six eleven to play. If you are just tuning in, as they lead Danville, it's been the arm of Andrew Smolin, who's thrown two touchdowns tonight to Zach Deal. A moment ago, a forty-three yarder. We just saw the replay on the OH report. Kickoff will go into the end zone for a touchback. Aiden Culler's got a monster leg. He's got two extra points. Also a big field goal, and I'll tell you what, how good, I, I wrote it down in my notes, and everybody knows Lucas runs the ball, but Smolin can throw that football, and that's just another weapon to Lucas. Yeah, there. It, I mean, you know, Uncle Uncle Nick is proud right now, Andrew, uh, of you th putting the ball in the air and, and uh, uh, just, just having a great night putting the ball in the money. I mean, you don't, I mean, his accuracy tonight has been impressive. Um, just... Guys not have to make extraordinary catches, just putting it putting it right on them. Yeah, putting them right on them is the exact key. Now, Danville needs some points. They haven't been able to score on this Lucas defense. They'll start from their own 20-yard line. They'll hand it off to Max Payne. He'll work his way for a couple of yards up the middle. Now, Chris, as I ask you this, 5.55 left in the third, 17-0 Lucas. You're Danville. I mean, you really need to score on this drive because you need three scores in some variety to be able, you know, to try and win this game. I mean, I know it's halfway through the third, but you need points here, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, the, the clock is going to become, if not already, become an issue. I think um, they, they, they've they had guys open, um, you know, early in the game. I just think they need to kind of go back to that and take advantage of that. Danville second down and seven as they hand the football off. That will go again to Max Payne. Good job. Number Buck Payne Arnold Walker. came flying in, number 51. Dylan Page was forward. in there, Danville. and Daniel Hawkinsmith all converge at the 25-yard line. He Dylan gets a short gain, but it, it, it's been tough We're sledding in there with that Cub defense. It, it's tough running in, in inside the you know, off tackle for them, and without that – kind of jet motion pulling those guys, pulling those force players out. It's been tough sledding for Danville to run inside the tackles. Two yards on that gain, third and five Danville. The ball at their own 25 yard line, 4.55 to play here in the third, 17 nothing. Lucas Wesker back to pass, gonna throw one over the middle. Zach Deal, did he intercept Zach that Deal ball? That Zach Deal, what it looked like catch. he got it with one hand. We're gonna get the replay, yeah, Zach they're, they're Deal. They're figure it out now. The throw over the middle, was he able to bring that in? They say he intercepts the football. Incredible catch by Zach Deal. He is the real deal. <laughs> nice. Yes, he called it an interception. It is an interception. I'll tell you what. I didn't see anything from the video evidence of the OH report that he didn't intercept that ball. I don't know if he got both hands on it or one, but the interception was made, and Lucas will take over just outside of the 35-yard line. See where they officially put it, maybe closer to the 38. Boy, Zach Deal's had a ball game. We're gonna call that a one-handed catch that, that just 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 to give the kid a one-handed catch. I right? like it. No, I like I mean, it. We, we don't have we don't have any evidence to support <laughs> yeah. otherwise. So what a, what a great hey, catch. Live, live, I great thought, catch. Yeah, live I thought it was a one-handed catch and 
We'll go, we'll go ahead and say it was. Zach Deal, tip of the cap, interception. Lucas, they lead 17-0. Four, 49 to go here in the third. 17-0 again. They'll take over at the Danville 38-yard line. Andrew, 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 Small. Andrew Small and the quarterback will keep it. And there's really nowhere to go. Good job by Danville trying to work toward that right side. They collapse. Maybe a one-yard game, maybe a half yard. He didn't get much. Yeah, kind of a kind of a, what were you talking? Kind of a spreadish formation where Smolens in the gun and they, and they you know jet motion across and run that trap back the other way. Um, just gonna see what kind of adjustments there. They did a nice Danville did a nice job of of uh, tackling that. We'll call that virtually no gain on the play. So we'll call it second and ten. Lucas ball at the Danville 38 yard line. 4:08 to play here in the third quarter. 17 nothing. Lucas they'll pitch it coming near side. It's Grayson Jackson cuts it up inside. He'll be up ended at around the 34-yard line. Good job by Levi Lyons, the linebacker there for Danville. We can peek it and tell you, if you're listening on the radio, watching on the OH report, that Columbia Station has tied Crestview 6-6, third quarter, that game up in Medina. Oh, look how big those guys look from Columbia. <laughs> they're, they're, they're giants in there. <laughs> It's a big offensive line. Absolutely. By the way, I believe, Travis, they entered unbeaten as well, so that's a battle of unbeatens right there. But, hey, regional semifinals, everybody's really good. Lucas, third down and six. They'll pitch the football, coming to the near side, trying to build that wall as Chris talks about it. It's Tom's, and he's rode into the sideline. Good job right there. Max Payne, one of the first guys to greet him. No gain, maybe a loss. Yeah, great great job stringing it out. Right here you see, you just see guys – Moving laterally, 55 gets a little bit deep, but just moving laterally down the line of scrimmage, that ball's got to come to you eventually. As long as we, you're putting a brick in the wall somewhere, um, the ball's coming to, to somebody. So they did a nice job stringing that out. Under three to play here in the third quarter, 17-0. Lucas, fourth and six yards to go. Looks like they're going to go for it from the Danville 34-yard line. Let's see if they throw the football. Smolin's been good here tonight. Back to pass. He'll roll to the near side. He'll throw. Got a receiver there. Intercepted by Danville. Intercepted by Danville. That's Colopy on the interception at around the 17-yard line. It looks like we're going to have pass interference. Um, I saw a jersey fly as the inside receiver was working vertically down the field. Um, Okay. One, of, one of the defenders looked like they grabbed a jersey of, of the slot receiver. Uh, was not the receiver that caught the football. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't see a penalty marker. Okay, good eyes. And I'll tell you, this place went silent. When Danville had that interception, it looked like they were going to take the ball away from the Cubs. Now, as you mentioned, we'll sort out this penalty. The official will call it a hold. You are correct. You saw a jersey. It's a hold. The Danville fans in front of us on the home side do not like it. The Lucas fans are loving it because they have a home and kitchen supply first down. It was fourth down and six yards to go. A holding penalty the 12th time. They'll move the chains. That one via penalty. Yeah, you take them how you can get them. Um, you know, that was a, what, a, what a swing of momentum well, there. You get, a, you get an interception and all of a sudden – They've got a first down on the on the 25 yard line. We'll talk about it after this play. They're going to have a direct snap like a wildcat to Logan Toms. He'll work at right side line of scrimmage 24. He'll get down inside the 20, down near the 17, so he gets close to seven yards on first down. All right, so real quick, Chris, 17 nothing. Lucas Danville looks like they have a takeaway. Then they don't because of a penalty. Lucas punches this in with a score. Man, you mentioned a swing in momentum. Yeah, it's. I mean, you, you come out with a with a pick, and and you know all of the sudden you're rejuvenating in life here for about five seconds until you realize you, 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 there's there's uh, laundry on the field. 2.07 to go here in the third quarter. 17-0, Lucas, direct snap will go to Logan Toms. It is blown up. Caden Colopy comes in for a TFL back to the 24. So those seven yards just got erased. Yeah, it looks like maybe, uh, I don't know, like, kind of a stunt out there because he wasn't a, a block absorber. Uh, wasn't one of those guys that was taking on one of those guards or anything. Kind of came free um, off the edge and, and like to see a little more of that here. Well, I mentioned seven-yard gain a moment ago by Logan Tom. Seven-yard TFL right there as they take down Logan Tom. So now third and ten. Lucas the ball at the Danville 24. 130 to go in the third. 17-0 Cubs. Back to pass. Smolin going to roll to the right trying to find somebody and Otis throw it into the feet of a bunch of Danville players and maybe a Lucas player deal in the neighborhood incomplete at around 
the 23-yard line. There was just nowhere to throw the ball, and he didn't want to turn it over. Yeah, I mean, it's a two-man route. There was, you know, one or two guys on both of the receivers out there. I think it was, you know, kind of the passing situation, so you can kind of sit back on that, bringing up fourth and ten here. I think we may have an Aiden Culler field goal attempt coming up here. Yeah, well, fourth and ten. This, we'll see where we're going to put the football. Line of scrimmage is the 24. They'll put it down. It looks like at the 31. This would be a 41-yard attempt. He absolutely has the leg. Yeah. Aiden Culler, 122 to go in the third. He'll line up. He'll boot it on the way. That kick is good. It would have been good from 50. Good from 41. We'll take a break. 116 to go in the third. Lucas leads now 20 to nothing over Danville. Back in a minute, you're listening to High School Playoff Football on WMAN. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Joining us tonight, Chris Miller from Ontario as Lucas, a moment ago, a 41-yard field goal from Aiden Culler. Now he kicks the ball off with 1.16 to play here in the third quarter. And right, Danville will have it starting out at their own 20-yard line. Teaming up tonight with the OH Report. High school playoff football. We got a live look in as well. Crestview and Columbia tied at six in the fourth quarter. Hey, if you're going to play in playoff football, you know you're going against a good defense. The Cougars have had a great offense, yeah. but they have a good defense too. Yeah, Coach Scheid has done a great job in Crestview uh, this year with that defense and, and really got a lot of respect for Coach Haverdale and Coach Scheid at Crestview and, and super happy for them and, and the run they're making Number this year. And we want to continue, you know, hopefully they continue that. Well, Max Payne will start from his own 20-yard line. They'll hand the football off. He'll go left side. Got a good couple of blocks off the left side. And then I'll tell you what, as he got out there, one of the uh, linebackers for Lucas, senior Dylan Page, number 53, able to tackle him under a minute to play here in the third. Good run, though, about seven yards for Max Payne. Problem is Danville's down 20 to nothing to Lucas. Late stages here in quarter number three. Blue Devils at the line. Three wide receivers now coming to the left, excuse me, coming to the right side. They'll now throw it to the right side. Caught there to the tight end, just shy of the 30 yard line. And catch to Caleb Lucas, the sophomore, upended right there by Lucas. Corbin Tom's got some help. A couple of linebackers as well. Corbin Tom's terrific defensive back for the Lucas Cubs. You know, Danville's going to need to score on probably every possession that they get the ball from here on out with well, the way Lucas is grinding the clock. Well, they got three seconds left in the quarter. They're going to try to get the snap off. They will. Wessaker's going to run it. Right side, he'll struggle forward out near the 34-yard line, and that'll bring us to the end of the third. Good job by Corbin Toms and Dylan Page and others and Caudill on the stop. We'll take a break. Three quarters in the books after three. Lucas 20, Danville nothing. Back in a minute, you're listening to High School Playoff Football on WMAN.
Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Welcome back to the Cold Corral here at Clear Fork High School. We have three quarters in the books of the Division 7 Regional Semifinal where Lucas has a 20 to nothing lead on Danville. The Blue Devils will start the fourth quarter with the football as they throw the ball through the hands of the receiver and nearly intercepted through the hands of Caden Cullopy and Daniel Hawkinsmith almost had one in his lap. Or he did for a moment. Yeah, he did. Yeah, my goodness. Uh, man, those 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 kind of things are. Yeah, I think it might be about seven. seven maybe, of them now? maybe seven balls in the hands of, of intended receivers that are dropped. I mean, those are gimme plays. Those are you know get it out there quick. Get your, get the ball in the in the hands of your athlete and let him make something of it. Uh, but you got to catch the ball first. Twenty nothing, Lucas. Second. And 10, Danville from their own 34-yard line. Four wide receivers. Wesseker back to pass. Going to step up. Got some time. Throws one over the middle. Receiver had it through his hands. Intercepted right into the hands of Logan Toms at the 45-yard line of Lucas. And the Cubs with another takeaway. Again, a Danville player got his hands on the ball but couldn't bring it in. And the Cubs have an interception. That yeah. one was a little high, yeah, that right? Was a, that, would, that would have been a tough ball to bring in. It was a little high and behind him. Um, you know, you just kind of hope maybe he can get a hand on it enough that it de deflects it so that it isn't a pick. But uh, uh, Lucas comes up with it and get the ball in pretty good field position here. And, and this is this is what they're built for here. They're up 20. Um, they got the ball with, with you know, 12 minutes. And, and I don't think we're going to see the ball in the air here. Uh, they're going to they're gonna grind it out in three yards and three yards and try to chew as much time off that clock as they can. Well, Lucas will have it on the interception. Let's say he went down at the 44-yard line, their own 44 after the interception. Second one of the night for the Cubs. They'll pitch it this time to Jackson, and he'll be dropped in the backfield. Good job that time by the defensive end, Dylan Loney. Comes up to make that stop. Yeah, and the other guy in on the on, on the tackle there, um, number 45, Caden Colopy, who who had that big tackle for loss in the last possession that kind of put him up in a situation a third and long and really got him the ball back. So I don't know if they're if they're kind of bringing pressure off of the edge. It looks like he's the force player over there. If they're if they're just kind of saying, hey, we're just going to bring the house now and try to get him stopped and, and uh, have a little success doing that. That is a one-yard loss back to the 43. 20-0 Lucas, fourth quarter. 11.08 to go in the football game. They'll pitch the football. No, they will not. But the quarterback's going to keep it and maybe get that one yard they lost back. Nothing else. They faked the pitch, and he just ran the football. Just kind of spun right around. And went ahead and a good job right there by the middle of that Danville defense. Give him a yard back to the line of scrimmage. King was in on the stop for Danville. But a good job by the Blue Devils with 10.40 to go here in the football game. High school football on WMAN. We're driven by the Buckeye Superstore. State Route 39 in Shelby. Home of the low payment kings. BuckeyeSuperstore.com. Aaron Hines, Chris Miller with us tonight in the broadcast booth. Teaming up with our friends at the OH Report. Some light snow falling here in the valley. Everybody in layers here tonight on a cold night. Wind chill about 25 degrees. They'll pitch the football now. Logan Toms and like a bowling ball just rolling through that line out near the 49. Give him about four, maybe five yards. Didn't look like there was going to be much there. It's impressive to watch the Lucas backs. And I say the Lucas backs because it's, it's any or all of them. Uh, when, when they see a little sliver, a little hole, a little window, uh, they put their foot in the ground and they just get vertical and and fall for, f forward for two or three yards and uh, it's just a it's a it's a really cool thing to watch if you're a football fan or a fan of of schemes and running a football how they execute this fourth down and five though they didn't get the first down so they're going to have to punt it from their own 49 yard line Danville coming in hoping to block it they don't Aiden Color gets it off the boot will hit at about the 25 yard line it'll Hop a couple yards further down near the 22, the 23. See where they officially spot it. Maybe the 23. And that is where Danville will take over first and 10. 
As we remind you, you can always log on to our website and check out the latest athlete of the week. We hand that out each and every week. Presented by Neil Katie Insurance. You can get a free quote at neilkadyinsurance.com. Neil Katie Insurance of Ashland and Norwalk. Aaron, I'm, I'm going to say that the best catch of the night was just made by this sideline official. Uh, the ball boy threw the ball in, kind of went over top of his uh, uh, over top of his shoulder, and he tipped the ball and made a one-handed catch. It was an incredible grab. I don't know if we've got that on video or not. I'll tell you what, I missed that's it. That's worth a review. I, I right missed there. it. I, I was not. I was looking down. I'm glad you were all over it. Danville will take over after the punt. They'll throw a little screen pass. Get it to Max Payne. Breaks a tackle. 30-35. And he'll get a little bit further out near the 37-yard line. So a good job right there of about 14 yards. Holman Kitchen Supply first down for Danville. Their seventh of the night. And as you mentioned, down 20 to nothing, 9.20 to go in the game. They got to move the chains, but they haven't found the end zone tonight. Now would be the time to get some points. Five wide receivers. Wessaker's going to roll to the right. Thought about throwing a... Man was coming, he eludes, now he'll step up, throw it down the field, nearly caught on a diving play by Max Painted around the 30-yard line, but it'll fall incomplete. Yeah, you've got to now, uh, you're in a position with nine minutes left at down 20 to nothing. You're, you're kind of in a two-minute-ish uh, kind of mode where you've got, you've got to score, you've got to score quickly to kind of make this stuff up, but, but not at the, not at the um, you know, at the cost of, of chucking the ball downfield all the time. You know, you, you, you got to do what you, you do, you, right? You still have to move the chains. Um, you know, the b ball in space underneath with, with kids having opportunities to, to get yards after the catch is, is uh, just, just as effective as chucking the ball down the field. All right, so Danville second down 10 at their own 37-yard line. 9.03 to go in the game, 20 to nothing. Lucas back to pass. It's Wessaker. Got some time this time. Now he doesn't. Pressure's on. Now he's just going to have to throw it away into the sideline. Buck Arnold has been played a good, good game defensively. He was there. Wessaker had some time. Do you credit the Lucas secondary? There was really nowhere to throw the ball. Yeah, I mean, that was that was a four-vert set. All four uh, receivers ran down the field. And, and, and when your quarterback scrambling around, one thing you want your receivers to do, if you're deep, you come short. If you're short, you go deep. You reroute yourself. You play backyard football and try to try to get a completion in there and, and keep the chains moving. Not able to do that this time. 8.55 to go in the football game. 20 to nothing, Lucas. Third and 10, Danville. Their own 37-yard line. Two receivers make it three. Man in motion. Back to pass. Pressure coming. Steps up. Wesserger got hit as he unloads down that's, the field. There was contact. By Corbin Toms early on the D, or excuse me, on the wide receiver. So the defensive back got in there early. It's going to be pass interference on Lucas. And you can kind of see Corbin Toms maybe losing his balance a little, stumbling, but he got his hand in there early, and that's going to be a penalty on the Cubs. Yeah, I mean, those 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 are 50-50 situations, and they're, they're trying to make a play on the ball, and, and um, you know, the ball is outstretched. The quarterback is, or the receiver is stretching out to catch the ball, and as a DB, you want to, you want to kind of you know mirror what that receiver is doing, and, and sometimes you get there a little bit early. Sometimes you get away with those too. Not not when it's that early, right? Not, not, not in that case. <laughs> yeah. First and ten, Danville. They'll move the football to the Lucas 48-yard line. 8:49 to go in the football game. 20 to nothing, Lucas. Handoff. It'll go to Max Payne. Good move. Makes a guy miss at the line of scrimmage inside the 45 and down near the 41. You know, you throw the ball a couple times. You loosen that defense up. You've taken some shots down the field. Um, you know, vertical routes, post routes, and now all of a sudden you, you run the ball and you pick up eight, eight nine yards in, in a run game. And and I really like this, you know, kind of spread it out, sling it, and then, and then run the ball when the box is empty to approach here. Second and three from the Lucas 41-yard line. Four wide receivers, two each way. Back to pass Wesseker. Got some time. He'll step up. Nowhere to go with the football. Now the pressure's coming. Now he's going to unload left side. Got a receiver. It's Colopy at the 20. Breaks a tackle. 15. He'll dive down near the 10. Grayson Jackson in on the stop for the Lucas Cubs along with Logan Toms. But one of the deepest, if not the deepest drive of the night has Danville first. I believe going to be first and goal at the 10. Yeah, it looks like Colopy came up a little bit limp after that play. Uh, come off the field. I don't know, maybe he's hurting a little bit, but man, what, the time that he had to throw the football, Wesker at all all day to, to, to find somebody down the field. Under eight to play in the football game first and goal at the 10. He'll throw it right side into the end zone. He was going for his wide receiver out there. There was a little contact out there. I know the Danville fans wanted a penalty. It was a little high. 
in the end zone. Looks like he got there a little bit early. Ball was up a little bit. Uh, looked like he had his hand around. Uh, uh, hook, hand almost around the hooked, hooked yeah. him a little bit. Yep. He was going for Spencer Payne, the senior that time. Incomplete. No penalty marker. Clock stop. 7:52 to go in the football game. 20 to nothing. Lucas. Fourth quarter. Division seven regional semifinal. Four wide receivers. Danville second and goal from the Cub 10 yard line. Their deepest drive of the night. Wesker back to pass. Got some time. Throws it over the middle. Had a receiver. That's caught a it. And he's in. Touchdown Danville. Into the end zone. He threw into heavy traffic over the middle. And the guy he targeted a moment ago, he got now. Spencer Payne, the senior. Good catch in traffic. Yeah, nice slant in traffic. Uh, you kind of kind of take a look here. You get motion across. Hopefully that's pulling that safety. You can see four jumping that motion guy, and then you slant underneath. Try to try to throw a dart in there before the backside safety gets over and, and uh, make makes contact. But a nice nice ball, nice scheme to get in the end zone for Danville. All right, Max Payne is on for the point after. There's the snap. The kick is on the way. And that kick Missed is it. no good. Missed it to the right. We'll keep it right here. 7.46 to play in the football game. It's now 20 to six. Lucas on top of Danville. So the Blue Devils score. And we remind you that all of our extra points brought to you by Mill Iron Auto Parts. And you can stop on by and see them. It's a good idea because you'll receive top dollar for your scrap vehicle. Mill Iron supporting local high school athletes. State Route 39 between Mansfield and Shelby. What do we have in the Crestview game? Crestview six, Columbia six. Fourth Still quarter. Not fourth quarter, uh, big defensive battle here. Uh, hopefully the Cougars can pull that out tonight. That game up in Medina, awaits report in our sister station, WNCO and Ashland, teaming up there. Tell you what, that Crestview defense, uh, I covered the Owen Barker kid. Man, he's the real deal for Crestview. They got a lot of really good players on that team. And I know they've had quite a run the last several years at Crestview. Yeah, they've, they've got a nice program there. And, uh, and, and, and like I said, added, added Coach Scheid, who had previously been at Lexington, uh, on as their defensive coordinator, running that stack uh, defense and just does it. So yeah, almost a tribute like Lucas's offense unique, uh, Crestview's Number defense 11, uh, equally as unique in the way that they kind of run that stuff. But. We, we can tell you 320 left in that game. So oh. that game's getting wow. close. Thank you, oh, Travis. Wow. 320 left in that game. Danville with an onside yeah, kick. It looks like Lucas is going to have it. That ball's on the ground. Oh, does Danville yeah, have it? I, I thought Lucas that, recovered. Maybe not. Hang it, on. It's bouncing around okay. in there. No, Danville's They're saying they have around. it. What do we yeah, have? Right there it is. 82. Okay. We got uh I'll tell you what, I think the official, yeah. the officials were looking for the ball, yeah. and 82 came yeah. out of the pile he's, with he's, it. He's walking out with it, trying to find an official well, I'll to Well, i tell you what, I thought one of the Cubs had it right away. Somehow right. it... Right through his legs. Went, okay, went right, right through his legs. Yep. Oh, man, if you are Danville right now, I know you're still down a couple of scores, but you got to feel some momentum. Chris, they scored a moment ago. Then you get an onside oh, kick, you get it. If you can go down within the, just the next couple of minutes here and be able to score, give yourself time to be able to do that again or get a stop with your timeouts and score again, right? Yeah, yeah and remember what got you there. You spread it out, you threw it around a little bit, you, you ran the ball when given opportunities when the box was empty. Just just continue to do what, you, what you've been doing here. All right, 7.44 to go in the football game. Danville down 20 to six. They have the football. They start at the Lucas 48 yard line. Wesseker scrambling around, nowhere to go. He'll pull it down and run, and he'll get inside the 45 and step out of bounds at around the 40-yard line. So he scrambles for about eight yards when there was just nobody open. Good recognition by the quarterback. Gosh, tuck the football, though. You got that ball out there like a loaf of bread. Put that thing in there, tuck it in. That That is a very precious thing in a That's football That's a football game. coach in the booth seeing that, right? Yeah. You're seeing that? Saying, yeah, driving me nuts yeah. there. Get the ball, keep the ball safe. Second down and two. Danville, ball at the Lucas 40-yard line. 7.38 to go in the game, 20-6. to six. Lucas on top, Wessaker, five wide receivers, back to pass. Got some protection. Now going to step up, going to throw, and got a receiver behind the Lucas defense. It's Colopy. He caught it into the end zone. Caden Colopy gets behind the defense on a 40-yard touchdown strike in the Danville Blue Devils. You blinked. They just scored twice. Yeah, they, they, they showed last week they have the ability to score quickly 
um, you know, by putting the ball in the air and, and, and letting those guys get out in space and run. And it just looked like uh, Tom's kind of let, let his receiver come off a little bit. So it's so hard when those plays are drawn out for that long for those DBs to cover that long. And that's why it's important those guys, those receivers just continue to move, keep trying to get open, and let your quarterback find you. Well, Danville's going to go for two. Remember, they missed the extra point. It's 20-12, to 12, Lucas, 7.27 to go in the football game. The quarterback, no, it's going to be Max Payne. There's the little jump pass. Travis talked about the throw it right side, knocked incomplete. Thought he had it out there to his tight end. Somebody for the Cubs got over there and knocked that ball loose. It was a crafty little play. I like that. Kind of, you know, put Max back there. Everybody think he's going to run the ball. The tight end kind of, you know, trails out into the flats. Just got to bring that in. I think it was Aiden Culler. I think Aiden Culler's the one that got his hand in there. And how big is that? Because now Lucas keeps an eight-point lead. So if Danville was to stop the Cubs and get it back, they got to score and get the two-point conversion. So that was a big, big play in this game. Yeah, I mean, eight-point game, if you get that, you, you know, obviously a touchdown and an extra point wins the football game for you. Uh, if you go ahead and kick it there, you've still got an opportunity to tie it later. So it's an interesting decision uh, with seven minutes left. Uh, to go ahead and go for two and, and um, you know, with th this early in the game. There's always a conversation. Some coaches will wait and go for it. Others will go for it early. It's kind of how you feel personally, right? It's how you maybe you even feel at the time, right? Momentum maybe? Yeah, I mean, how do you feel like um, the, the last couple scores are a result of, of you seeing something and, and your ability to sustain some level of success? Then hang on. We're getting ready for the kick, everybody maybe gearing up for possibly an onside on kick, Danville. and Danville, as they go to kick off, is offsides, and so we're gonna have a re-kick here, and Travis is telling me here that Columbia, did they just score? Yeah. Columbia just scored with 40 seconds Four, left. 14 oh, seconds Oh, 14 left. seconds left, thank you, Travis. I don't know, Travis, Travis has like five monitors going up here. Chris and I are watching the field, he is all over it, thank you. Not good news for Crestview fans, as with 14 seconds left, Columbia Station has scored up in Medina. Well, I'd almost pooch this over top of the, the front line just like that. Well, yeah, well, uh, he drilled Max that one. Max Payne's going to drill one. It yeah. goes over the head of Corbin Tom. It'll roll into the end zone. So much space in there behind that first line. And there's one guy deep. And sometimes if you can just throw a, a chip shot into the 30-yard line, you got a chance of running down and covering it. Yeah, Max Payne can boot that ball, can he not? He's Man, got a leg. Absolutely. All right, so the ball into the end zone. Lucas will have it at their own 20-yard line. If you are just joining us, Lucas led this game 20 to nothing after three quarters. Danville scored two touchdowns, one after an onside kick, but two touchdowns about 20 seconds apart. But, however, they missed the extra point, and then the next time they scored, they went for two and didn't get that. So that's why it's 20 to 12, Lucas, with 7.27 to go in the football game. Chris and I talked about it. Travis did as well, hoping for a good one tonight. We got a dandy here down in the valley, Lucas trying to use some clock and maybe put one more score and put it away. They'll hand the football off coming on the sweep. That was Grayson Jackson tries to get the corner. He'll get a few yards out near the 23. Yeah, that's a nice run for them. Any, anything positive at this point. I uh, want to try to probably stay in bounds if they can uh, just to keep keep chunking that clock. I know as a, as a defensive guy, you just, you know, you're really rooting for your offense to hold the ball as long as they possibly can in situations like this. Well, as you mentioned, the clock stops. Only six seconds runs off the clock because he ran out of bounds. I know for Coach Spittler, you like getting about three yards, but you want to stay in bounds. They'll hand the football off this time. Good run. Logan Toms across the 30, out near the 31. I think that's enough for a Holman Kitchen supply first down, and yes, Number it two, is. Tom, I'll tell you what, Logan Toms drove three bodies, three Danville bodies for about five yards. There's nobody in there helping him. He's, he, he, he drug them by himself in that situation. Call that, that a man's a, run? That was a, that was a good, <laughs> hard man run right there. Logan Toms, Holman Kitchen supply first down and a big one because they moved the chains. The clock's running mm -hmm. under seven to play. Cubs up by eight here in the fourth. Yep, if you're Lucas, just keep keep that clock running. It's interesting. They're in, they're in the gun. They're in their, their spread set here to finish and, and motion in and across and um, – First and 10 at the 31-yard line as the back comes flying through Danville's 
excuse me, at their own 31-yard line. Danville up ends. Grayson Jackson around the 35-yard line. He got about three, maybe four. Yeah, you've, you've got to get that play stopped. I mean, that, that's 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 kind of a counter-ish blocking scheme, and, and he's putting his foot in the ground and getting up inside of a kick out with an extra blocker kind of leading up through on, on what we call a zero backer, the first backer in the box. And, and uh, if you're Danville, you got to get that. You got to get that bleed and stop there. All right, so second down, six yards to go. Lucas, the ball is at their own 35-yard line. They lead 20 to 12. Just over six to play in the football game. Jackson in motion. The quarterback Smolin's going to keep it. Going to put his head down. He'll bowl forward. He won't have the first down, but he's about a yard shy. He gets out to the 40-yard line. Andrew Smolin has been effective running the football. It's the same play, Aaron. Only instead of giving it to the to the uh, jet guy to cut up in, the quarterback's keeping it. The scheme is the same. So. Um, you know, obviously feeling like they're having some success right there off tackle, kicking that end and getting the ball up inside. And how big is this, Chris? Third and one for Lucas. 5.30 to play in the game. They lead 20 to 12. Danville needs a stop here on third and one. Smolin's going to keep it. He runs into a pile, and I don't think he has the first he, down. He, he did not. I think he, they stopped him right there at about the 40. Yeah, they're going to spot the ball on the 40-yard line shy of the, shy of the sticks. Jordan King was there, number 75, and he got some help from 53, Dakota Ricketts. Yeah, Ricketts just picked him up and said, we're going this way, buddy. Um, well, it's fourth and one. No gain there for Lucas. Decision time for head coach Scott Spittler. Do you punt it away? Do you go for it? If you go for it and you don't get it, Danville will have it at your 40-yard line with under five to play in the game, down a touchdown, a two-point conversion. Lucas will hand the football off. It'll go to Logan Toms. I don't know. Uh, it's real close. On the, spot. the guy up top's got it. Uh, it looks look, like he's got it. It looks Toms. close, and Logan it. Toms has the football, and I'll say by inches yeah i mean the yard to gain what looked like was like the uh what the 41, 41. and and they've got it spotted just past that man yeah he got it and the nose of the ball probably is just shy of the 42 and i'll tell you what how many times tonight have we seen Logan Toms not only get the ball, but just have guys on him and just take them with him? Yeah, he's he's running the ball really hard, um, and it just just a uh, a really thing of beauty to watch them put their foot in the ground and get upfield. There's another counter. I mean, they're running just one or two schemes in here, just continuing to hammer the ball over into their bench, running the ball over there, kicking guys, sealing guys, uh, just keep those chains moving. So that is a run by Andrew Smolin after the first down at the 42. Smolin runs it for about a yard. Colonel Crawford, Columbus Grove are tied at seven. Tied at seven with 45 seconds left. Okay, tied at seven with 45 seconds left in that game. Is the Crestview game final? We'll, we'll, we'll check on that. We know Crestview was down after a late score by Columbia Station. Lucas second and nine. Ball is at their own 43, mm. leading by eight here in the fourth quarter. They good stretch defense. it out with Tobbs. You mentioned good defense. Danville will take him down. Maybe a yard out to the 44. Danville will burn a timeout with 3.23 to play in the football game. Lucas 20, Danville 12. Fourth quarter, timeout, Danville. Travis tells us Columbia Station 12, Crestview 6. That game can't have much left, right? So the Cougars open to have a big play and maybe pull one out. You never know what happens in football, but it, you know it's kind of what, what a what a fantastic year for Crestview. Yeah. What a what a great run! Uh, looks like maybe there's four seconds left in that game with uh, third down. Wow, a lot of good football tonight. Got a good one here at Clear Fork High School. 20 to 12, Lucas. 3.23 to go in the football game. High school football on WMAN. We are driven by the Buckeye Superstore. State Route 39 in Shelby, home of the low payment kinks. BuckeyeSuperstore.com. We're actually peeking in on the probably final play of that Crestview game as they're doing some laterals out there. The ball got knocked loose. Columbia will grab the football, and we can tell you Crestview's season has come to an end. They fall 12 to 6 to Columbia up in Medina in a low scoring football game. What a run for the Cougars, but unfortunately it ends tonight right, in the regional semifinals. Lucas. Lucas 
Out of the timeout by Danville. Third and eight Cubs. The ball at their own 44-yard line. 3.23 left. Lucas leading 20-12. to Smolin back to pass. Will edge. he throw it? He's to the, the left. Edge. He rolls. He fires, and that ball's incomplete. There was a lot of blue jerseys oh, out there. It'll fall incomplete. And Lucas will bring up fourth down and eight. They're going to have to punt the football back to Danville. Where I thought he had an opportunity maybe early, kind of closed on him late to just run it himself. I, I mean, kind of thought he might pull it down. you get out of the pocket and you see that much green grass with, you know, third and, you know, whatever, just quarterback sometimes just, that's just as deadly as throwing the ball, uh, just as demoralizing from to a defensive standpoint when that quarterback gets out of the pocket and scrambles around. Well, here we go, three. 15 to play in the game, 20 to 12, Lucas. Fourth and eight Cubs at their own 44 yard line. They're gonna have to punt it away, Aiden Culler will boot it away back deep is Caden Colopy. If you were just joining us, Lucas led this game 20 to nothing, headed to the fourth quarter. Danville has scored twice here in the fourth quarter. One came after an onside kick, punt, well, hang in the air, hit one of the Cubs. It was Spittler, it hit him in the back at around the 33 yard line. It may have taken a hop after that and rolled. That's a break for Danville because you could, what, maybe lost 10, 15 more yards depending on turf, who knows? Yeah, you know, that ball, if that ball hits right on the turf, it could, it could bounce down inside the 10 yard line. So, you know, football is a game of, of field position and uh, it, it died right here on the 33 yard line best case scenario I thought I thought pretty fortunate we didn't get a roughing the kicker you know penalty or, or not fortunate for Lucas uh, it looked like there was some collision back there uh, with the kicker all right so Danville four wide receivers here on first and ten the ball he's at their own 33 yard line just over three to play in the game down eight Rolling to the right is Wessaker. He's going to pull it down and run across the 35. Hits the 40. Nobody picks him up midfield. He's into Lucas territory inside the 45. And then we rode out of bounds at around the 35-yard line. Oh, man. Wessaker pulled it down. Nobody closed on that sideline. Uh, nice job you know, blocking downfield there, uh, realizing your quarterback scrambling around. Kind of what I was talking about before for for Smolin, he kind of had the edge, and sometimes that, sometimes that's more effective than, than actually putting the ball in the air. Well, I'll tell you what, Holman Kitchen Supply first down, number nine on the night for the Danville Blue Devils, and they have themselves in business. First and 10 at the Lucas 35-yard line. 2.54 to go in the game, trailing 20 to 12. Danville will hand the football off to Max Payne, working it near side. And we got a penalty that comes in, and this may be a big one on Danville. It looks like it could be a hold. Grayson Jackson was calling for it as they were trying to get the corner, and it was. It was Grayson Jackson. I think he grabbed him. Yeah, grabbed him up and around the shoulder pads, and, and uh, you know, as it becomes evident when the guy tries to turn and run, um, and there's jersey flying that, it, that it's a hold. Tell you what, that West Holmes Van Wert game looks like it's pretty close. What, 34 29, Travis? Start of, the fourth. Start of the fourth quarter. They're a little bit behind us. They both throw I the ball. I was going to say, lot. they're probably throwing it more than we've yeah. had tonight. Andrew Smolin's been good throwing the ball, and wessaker has been good here in the fourth quarter, too. Like we got a shoe change, like, okay. a Mr. like Mr. Rogers style, like take off one set of cleats and put another one on. Yeah. 249 to go in the game, by the way. Danville, that is a hold. As we were rattling off scores, remember, you can find all the scores at our website, WMANFM.com. It's on the North Central State College High School football scoreboard. NC State, where the quality is high, the tuition is low, and you don't have to leave home to go far. All right, here we go. So that penalty will back up Danville to their own 45-yard line. You mentioned a shoe change, so we got a little brief pause in the action. Lucas 20, Danville 12, fourth quarter. Winner moves on to the regional title game. Winner of Warren JFK and Saline Southern next Saturday night at a neutral site. No one's thinking about that right now. You're thinking about this one in front of you. Danville first and 15 at their own 45 yard line. Wessaker back to pass. Good protection this time, but he can't find anybody. Now he's gonna have to pull it down and run. He runs inside the 40 yard line and knocked out of bounds. Where does he step well, out of bounds? The official ball. says, I believe around He's the 30, the let's call it the 38. 
On a bounce at the 38, so he scrambles for about seven. There was nothing there. Yeah, Lucas, is, uh, defensive backs did a nice job just kind of throwing a blanket on those guys, you know, in that initial surge, and then, and then you've got you know Wesker kind of running around there, hoping somebody, hoping somebody comes open late. And gosh, if I was him, you know, I'd be I'd just continue to to put the ball. Uh, and, and run the football once when nobody's up. You don't want to you don't want to force every, anything and, and have this game end on an interception. All right, so two twenty one to go in the game. Twenty to twelve. Lucas second down, thirteen yards to go for Danville. As the quarterback's going to wind up, he's going to throw one down the middle. That ball is knocked up into the air. I thought it was going to be intercepted. Knocked away by Zach Deal. That one hung up in the air a while. Yep. Going for Caden Colopy and it Zach bounced, Deal. Yeah, yeah. Might, it must have touched three different, you know, all three of them coming around there. Got a, got a, either a hand on it or a leg on it or something. I know Zach Deal got his hand in there somewhere to poke it loose, so it is incomplete. Clock reads 2.12 to play in the game. Danville third and 13. The ball is at the Lucas 38-yard line. 20 to 12 Cubs. You know, if you're Lucas right now, just, just you know, Make make sure the ball is caught in front of you if, if if you're giving one up, and then you come up and secure the tackle. We've got you know third and thirteen here. Five wide receivers back to pass. The quarterback flush to the right. He'll throw it. Picked that off. ball nearly intercepted. The no, Cubs not it. able to bring it in. Pass intended for number thirty-three, Josh Byers. Was going for Byers. He was rolling to the right. Pass was incomplete. Hunter Church was the defensive back, number three, who nearly got his hands in there and intercepted that ball. It's incomplete. It's really a break for Danville. He intercepts that ball. Yeah. Yeah, he did a nice job of, of, of undercutting that route and, and putting himself in a position to catch that ball. Travis tells us Warren JFK up 35 to nothing fourth quarter over Salineville Southern. Thank you, and the winner of this one, one would think will get JFK next week. Yeah, winning 35 to nothing. Fourth and fourth and 14 here. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna keep it right here. Fourth down, long as Chris mentioned, 13 close to 14 yards for Danville. Again, the football is at the 38 yard line of Lucas, 20 to 12 Cubs. Glad to have you with us Saturday night, high school playoff football here on WMAN and the OH Report coming to you tonight from the Wendy's broadcast booth. Appreciate you, Coach Miller, putting on the headset tonight. It's been fun, right? Yeah, it's, this is a great time. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. We had you a couple times last year. Yep. Had a good time. I think yep. you, I think you caught a couple of Lucas games last year in the postseason, yeah, right? Two Lucas games. Yep. yep. Yeah, in Lucas, in, on the uh, in the treehouse outside. The tree house. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't remember what it was called. You're, yeah. you're good to have like you're good to be in the box tonight with this the window open, like, yeah, right? This yeah. is more like a cabin here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're in layers, but it's not too bad with the window open here. Travis Berardi and crew with the OH support have been fantastic. Replays, all the great camera shots here tonight down in the valley. Big play, fourth and 13, Danville. 2.04 to go in the game from the Lucas 38 yard line. Max Payne is gonna be in there at quarterback. He'll throw the football, is that ball caught? caught? He throws the ball down near the 21 yard line. It is caught by Walker Wessaker, who was the quarterback, went out as wide receiver, and Max Payne throws a dart down to the 21-yard line, and they convert on fourth and long. Call that, call that concept chains, right? You sprint out and you tell you tell one or two receivers you're going to stop at the chains and get a first down. 144 to go in the game. Payne's going to stay in there. Quarterback will throw it to Colopy off the left side. He'll make a man miss and get out of bounds inside the 10, down near the 8-yard line. So Danville now has it first and goal at the Lucas eight yard line. Their 11th home and kitchen supply first down in tense moments in the valley. Yeah, flood concept through through to uh, to Caden there and, and let him kind of turn up the field and get something out of it. Lucas will burn a timeout. We'll keep it right here. When this game was 20 to nothing, Lucas going to the fourth quarter. I don't know how many people watching and listening thought that Danville was gonna have an opportunity to tie this game, and they do. I mean, yeah, they, I, mean, it, I, I mean, they have to score, they gotta get the two point conversion, because they're down eight, but it's right in front of them right now. No one's willing to go home, right? Like, you know, Lucas jumps out, and you, you know, they're they're playing good football tonight, and, and uh, you know, you know a lot of, a lot of, you know, well, there's a lot of high school kids not playing football tonight, you right. know, and, and 
and Danville's here because obviously they, they don't want to go home yet. And, and their second half effort here tonight is um, kind of is an indication of, of they're here to play football and they want to win too. And, and they've done some nice things, putting themselves in a position here to, to score and potentially tie the game up. 1.36 to go in the football game. Lucas 20, Danville 12. The Blue Devils have it first and goal at the Lucas eight yard line. Down eight means they need a score and a two point conversion to tie this game. Max Payne will stay in at quarterback. Wesseker lines up as one as three receivers split to the right, one to the left, four wide receivers. He'll roll to the right. Payne looking to throw into the end zone and through the hands of his receiver that time he was going for Walker Wesseker through his hands and incomplete with 1.30 to go in the game. Yeah, same same concept. You have a flood concept, a shallow route, a deeper route. Not, nothing, nothing, nothing in the back pile on there on that standpoint. But you know, so there's plenty of time. There's a minute 30 left to get the ball on the eight yard line. It was a first down. This is a second down play coming up here, second and eight. You know, let's not forget you, you've got time. You can you can run the football in here. I know they got here throwing the ball but it doesn't mean that you need to abandon the run game. Zach Deal in coverage. He was all over the receiver that time. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. They'll throw it right side. Caught by Colopy. He'll struggle for it. Breaks the tackle. Is he in? He is. He is into the end zone on an eight-yard touchdown throw and catch. Payne to Colopy in Danville. A two-point conversion away from tying this game up with 1.23 to go. Yeah, motion across. And then he bubbles out. Um, oftentimes, uh, the force player on the side of the motion will kind of attack that bubble, attack, attack all that stuff. Kind of sitting back on it. Um, he, you know, he does a nice job of catching the ball and getting in the end zone. We got a player down in the end zone for Lucas. So the two-point conversion will wait for a moment. Currently, 20 to 18. Lucas on top of Danville. The Cubs scored the first 20. Danville scored the last 18. All have came in the fourth quarter for Danville, who trailed 20 to nothing. And that's where you tell your kids you don't give up because the way Lucas really runs the ball, takes time off the clock, leading 20 to nothing, that had that, that has to feel more than 20 points. And Danville's able to rally. Yeah, Danville uh, stole a possession on the onside, remember, and then and you know, and then on that drive went in to score again. Uh, and that's what you've got to do against Lucas. You've got to steal possessions, uh, whether you're forcing them to, to punt the ball or, or whether you're getting turnovers, which is kind of a rarity when you play Lucas to get a turnover in the first place because right. they don't give you many opportunities right. for that. Uh, Danville's managed to steal a couple possessions here in the second half, and we've got a ball game. Well, here we go. Th I mean, this is huge because Danville gets this. They tie the game. Lucas stops them. The Cubs have a two-point lead with just over a minute to play. 1.23 to go. 2018 Lucas. Danville going for two to try and tie the football game. Max Payne in the gun. He'll roll to the right. Nowhere to go. He'll roll back. He'll throw it wide open and caught. And Danville has tied the game. Ryan Lucas catches the two-point conversion. They sold it. Everybody to the right. They threw it back to the left, and he was wide open. Gosh, you know what I thought when that ball was snapped? I thought, oh, here we go. They're gonna they're gonna sprint out to another flood concept. And then he puts his foot in the ground, and they were gonna drag. Defensively, that's so hard to see when you've seen sprint out the flood, sprint out the flood, sprint out the flood. Um, and then and then that receiver runs back across the green, across everybody that's running in the in the opposite direction, and just kind of comes out wide out the other end. So well, well executed play for Danville, um, 20 to 20 with a minute 23. But you know what, Lucas gets the ball back uh, here with a chance to win in the hands of their offense. Okay, yeah, good point. We're talking to Travis Berardi here in the booth at the OH Report. He talked about. Uh, when Lucas was playing in the state semifinals, they ran a play similar to that that worked. You remember that great run for Lucas? Logan Nicewander, all those guys for the Cubs. What a run oh, yeah. that was. That was a great football team. Danville down 20 to nothing to start the fourth quarter. I'll be honest, they didn't score their first point of the night till the 7.46 mark of the fourth quarter. They have tied the game at 20 with 1.23 to play. Kickoff will go out of bounds. At around the 20-yard line, that's not good news for Danville because you'll give the Cubs some pretty decent field position with 1.23 to play in this football game, all tied up at 20. You're going to have the ball with a 35-yard line. Um, 
Yes. Boy, it comes down to this here. I mean, we'll take a peek at the timeouts here. Looks like uh, Lucas has two timeouts left. Danville has, has one timeout left. So kind of interested to see how they attack this last drive. Well, Coach Miller, let's talk about it. Andrew Smullen can throw the football. You don't have a lot of time. You have a couple of timeouts. Aiden Culler is a weapon. Can you get him in range? He'd be kicking into the wind, but that dude can boot one from 50. Can you get him a chance? Yeah, I think there's time to, to, to move the ball down here, and then you're going for a win at this point. So here, yeah, here, here the Yeah, first in and 10 it's from like the 35, tipped. and I think it was back to pass the throw to the near side to Zach Deal. The way the ball didn't come out like a spiral makes you believe somebody may have got a paw on it, fingertip at least from Danville, incomplete. Yeah, they're, they're going to want to probably keep the ball in the air here again. Uh, just try to try to get a first down and like you said put themselves in a position to kick a game-winning field goal um, But at some point that tide turns and you go, okay, we don't want to give the ball back So it's it's kind of a dichotomy there of of how long do you keep it in the air? And when do you just keep the ball? So we'll see we'll see where coach Spittler feels like that threshold is great point because Danville's got a lot of momentum right now Second and ten Lucas their own 35 yard line tied at 24th quarter with 119 to go small and back to pass He'll roll right throw it caught gonna be out of the backfield That's caught by Logan Thompson will get oh, I thought he was gonna go out of bounds He won't he'll get the midfield then thrown out of bounds Good job by Logan Toms. I thought he was gonna go out of bounds instead kind of hug that sideline And then Caden Horn rode him into the sideline at midfield. Yeah, it looked like he stepped Yeah, stepped oh, out, stepped out at the 49 yep, stepped out of 49 yard line of Lucas he has a home and kitchen supply first down for the Lucas Cubs. Clock reads, 1.12 to go in the game. First and 10 at their own 49 yard line, tied at 20. Again, tense moments in the regional semifinal. Back to pass, Smolin winds up, fires, got a receiver caught at around the 41 yard line. He threw a BB yeah. over the middle. Boy, I tell you what, he flipped his hips, got set, delivered a nice ball. Look at that, kind of off his back foot even. Uh, like his like his shoulders, his shoulders were open to the sidelines, kind of sidearm. That was a nice ball. Corbin Toms on the reception, put him down at the 42-yard line. Timeout is taken by Lucas. They have one left. Clock reads 1:02 in the game. Wherever you are watching, listening, got a great one here tonight in the Clear Fork Valley. 1:02 to play in the game. Lucas Danville tied at 20. Cubs have the football. Second down and about a yard after a nine yard throw and catch from Smolin to Corbin Times. Second and one at the Danville 42 yard line. And Travis, you were telling me Columbus Grove, have they just won? They, they just defeated Colonel Crawford in overtime. 14 to seven, a couple of local area schools going down in heartbreakers tonight. All low scoring games, defense, you know, kind of defensive battles here. Defense late, wins late, championships, late right? Yeah. yeah, late in the regionals. It's uh, Now what, I mean, you've seen, where, what yard line do, does Lucas have to get to to have, I mean, you mentioned they're kicking into the wind. He's kicking into the wind, that's so, my thing. I mean, are we going, you know, are they, do they have to get to the 30, I mean, the 30 yard line, are you kicking a 47 yarder? Well, I'll tell you what, they like to get it a little further down the field as they snap the football, roll to the left, pressure on, and Smolens is gonna throw it near his receiver, but he can't get it to him, it's incomplete. With 57 seconds to play in the game, it'll be third and a yard for Lucas. Third and a yard. So they, first of all, you got to get a first down because you can't kick it from here. I would think you, if you'd love to get down to maybe around the 25, that way when he kicks it, you're kicking a, a low 40s type, low to you know mid 40s, just because he's kicking into the wind. Yeah. Well, at this point, with a timeout left and a minute on the clock, you're looking to get a first down and move the chains. Throw something high percentage here. Third and one. He'll roll to the right. He will throw the football. The Receiver got bumped into, no penalty will come out. It'll be incomplete. Zach Deal was hoping for the penalty. He will not be able to bring it in. It'll bring up fourth down and one for Lucas. The ball at the Danville 42 yard line. Again, fourth and one with 51 seconds to play in the game and one timeout for Lucas. Tell you what, you feel it. If you had more timeouts, more time, 
you'd run, get that first down, right? But you don't want to burn that last time out, right? Yeah, you, you've got to save that here. So this this ball's got to get past the sticks um, and, and hopefully out of bounds. And, and they are going to, you know, reset the chains here. And they're going to run it fourth they and one, them. and they will not get the first down. Danville yeah. comes in. They're going to get the ball here. And uh, with 47 seconds left, Danville's going to get the ball with, with a timeout left. And, and the way they've been throwing the football, man, if I'm Lucas, you know, right now I'm kind of looking at my dime package. We're going to bring in maybe another DB. Um, we're going to try to get pressure with three or four guys and sit on coverage and and, and really, really protect. Um, you know, you don't, you don't need to abandon there and, and you know, line guys up 20 or 30 yards downfield yet. We're not to that point yet. It's not the last play of the game. Um, but but we really got to be thinking about, you know, man under, two deep kind of looks here, here pretty quick. Dylan Loney. One of the first guys in on the stop, Levi Lyons and Max Payne for Danville, who now takes over at their own 42-yard line, tied at 20. Late in the fourth quarter, the quarterback back to pass, nowhere to go with it, just throws it out of a sea of people. It was caught on the sideline by the tight end, and around the 48-yard line, he gets pushed back, and then he works his way back up the field, and he'll go out of bounds at around the 44-yard line. Good job there by the tight end. Aiden Culler came in and pushed him in the back up the field and he'll go out of bounds at around the 44 yard line. I think the ball traveled like 30 yards in the air and, and they gained two on it. I know, they get a couple of yards. <laughs> yeah. 37 seconds to go in the game, tied at 20. Second and eight Danville from their own 44 yard line. They've scored 20 points in the fourth quarter to tie this game at 20, five wide receivers. Again, Payne in there at quarterback, he'll fire over the middle, got it to Wessaker. Diving catch at the 42-yard line. That is a home and kitchen supply first down. Their 13th of the night. Clock reads 29 seconds and running for Danville. Five wide receivers to the line, 21 seconds left in the game. Back to pass, Payne, he'll step up, nowhere to go. Gonna roll to the right, looks to throw it. Got a receiver out there and he caught it into the end zone. Touchdown, Danville. They throw a bomb to Wessaker. Unbelievable. Max Payne at quarterback has stepped in and thrown multiple touchdowns in the fourth quarter. This one, a bomb of 43 yards, and with 13 seconds to play, Danville has taken the lead. Are you kidding me? Well, here, here's an example of how the receivers rerouted. They did a nice job of if you're short, go deep. If you're deep, go short. We saw movement after the scramble, which allowed him to kind of break free on a, on a post route, put the ball in the air. Point after by Max Payne is up, and just like Mill Iron Auto Parts, it is good. With 13 seconds to play in the game, Danville now has a 27 to 20 lead. Max Payne has thrown two fourth quarter touchdown passes, and I'll tell you what, he looks like he's been playing quarterback all year. <laughs> he scrambled around and just chucked it up there. You know, it's like the game is 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 winding down. It, there's there's 20 some seconds left. What do you got to lose? Chuck, chuck it up there. The ball lands, you know, is, is landing or inside the three yard line. If if you don't convert it, you're going to overtime. If you do catch it, uh, you're you're scoring a touchdown and a possibility to win the football game. And and. Uh, it's really cool to see that. I'll tell you what, <laughs> this has been, this has been a fun night. Tell you what, the quarterback Wessaker just caught that touchdown yeah. pass. Yeah. He's been good at quarterback. Yeah. Max Payne, who started at running back and has kind of just kind of slipped over to the quarterback's role, has done a great job as well. And those two have been dynamite in the fourth quarter. Danville scored 27 unanswered points in the fourth quarter, and they have a seven-point lead on Lucas. 13 seconds to play. Line drive kickoff. Gonna hit Grayson Jackson at about the 32 yard line. And he'll go down right there with 11 seconds to play in the game. If you're Lucas, the problem is the clock has 11 seconds left. If you were down three, maybe you could somehow throw a pass or maybe even two and try to give Aiden Culler a chance, but now you gotta get in the end zone. Yeah, you've, you, you've got a couple of cracks here. I don't know if, if you've got you know, a trick play or something in the in the books or you know, maybe maybe a 15-yard dig route coming across the middle because you know they're going to be sitting back. Uh, looks like Danville's going to you know loosen those safeties up to about 20 yards. The corners are are loosened up to about 10 yards, and and uh, 
something under underneath here maybe. Lucas from their own 34 yard line, 11 seconds to play in the game. They throw it down the right sideline. The two defensive backs from Danville run into one another, but the ball falls incomplete. It was intended for, I was thinking the same thing. It was intended for Deal. If those two collide like that and he's able to catch the ball, he walks in. On a, on a ball that's left inbounds there, um, that might have been a touchdown uh, where, you know, the safety's coming over looking for the football, the corner's looking for the football, and you both kind of lose lose sight of the receiver. Um, hopefully this, this young man is okay yeah. uh, down on the sideline. Like I said, they collided into that sideline. I, I couldn't tell who it was. There are just six seconds left in the football game. They both were tracking the football and collided. And, again, hopefully everybody is going to be okay. As Lucas may only have one more play left. Can they get that ball somehow, some way into the end zone to try and send this game to overtime? Danville has had a fourth quarter that they're going to tell you about for years if they can close out the next six seconds because they were trailing Lucas 20 to nothing entering the fourth quarter. Those in the world of analytics that crunch the numbers would said, Chris, the chance of winning this game was not very good. I love the analytics reference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're, I mean, yeah. We're in that day and age, yeah, right? You're right. Yeah, I love it. Look at the data. What's the data show you? Not this. The <laughs> yeah. data does not show you this. And this is, you know, this is why you play the game. This is, this is an exciting night. Um, you know, you, you tell your kids, they just never know what can happen in a high school game. You never know. And, and if you keep playing, good things are going to happen. And that's, that's, that's what's going on on the Danville sideline. Timeout was taken. So Lucas trying to draw up something. What a fourth quarter it has been for Danville. Lucas dominated this game through three quarters. It was 20 to nothing. It looked like they were maybe even on their way to a shutout. Danville got one score, got an onside kick, scored, able to score two more times. Momentum has swung their way. Lucas, six seconds to play. They'll throw it left side, caught there by Toms. He's gonna wait, thought he might. Tries to break a tackle near the sideline. The clock will hit triple zeros. He'll go into the sideline and Danville has a historic comeback for the ages. Down 20 to nothing to start the fourth quarter. They scored 27 unanswered points in the fourth quarter and Danville stuns Lucas and ends their season. Final score tonight, Danville 27. Lucas 20 and Chris a thriller of a game. What an exciting football game. Like you said, for a while we thought it was going to just kind of slip away and it was, it was 20 to nothing going into the fourth quarter, like you said. Yeah. Crying out loud. But just, and and uh, what an exciting end to a great football game. And, and two, like, kind of, we opened up with this, right? Just two historically successful programs uh, meeting in the Valley tonight. Uh, both, both programs have a lot to be proud of. The towns have a lot to be proud of, of, of both of these groups of young men and, and I know that they they both put in I just I hate seeing this you know this Lucas side you know you know all the work that they put in all the prep work all the preseason work all the weightlifting that goes into that and just and, and it just kind of ends but excited for this Danville group kind of a revitalized um, you know that program a little bit and, and, and glad to see them um, you know, kind of turning a corner uh, of success and getting back to their old ways. For the ninth time in school history, Danville will play for a regional title next Saturday night. We'll wrap it up when we come back. Final score from the Clear Fork Valley and the Colt Corral. Danville scores 27 in the fourth quarter, and they beat Lucas. Final score, Danville 27, Lucas 20. We'll wrap it up next. Your high school playoff football on WMAN. the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. 
now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Nowadays, you've got enough things to worry about. Your car shouldn't be one of them. And at Spitzer, stay worry-free with our Spitzer Shield. Get exclusive new vehicle benefits, like a lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty. Unlimited time, unlimited miles. Plus, get benefits on our Spitzer certified vehicles, like our nationwide powertrain warranty, peace of mind with bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage, and more. Visit your local Spitzer Auto Store today and get the Spitzer Shield. At Spitzer, our world revolves around Back at Clear Fork High School tonight, Colt Corral and a lot of fans, well, a lot happy and a lot stunned on the other side as Danville scores 27 unanswered points in the fourth quarter and they shock Lucas 27 to 20. Final score here tonight as we welcome you to the Reinhardt Insurance Post Game Show, brought to you by Reinhardt Insurance Agency, Mansfield's trusted agency since 1956 on your way home from the game. And every time you get behind the wheel, stop the text and stop the wrecks, a caring reminder from Reinhardt Insurance. Joined by Ontario coach Chris Miller, who is in the booth with us tonight, teaming up with the OH Report. Danville fans celebrating in front of us. And as I'm going to run through this scoring summary, if somebody missed us a moment ago, Lucas led this game 20 to nothing after three quarters. We were scoreless after one. Aiden Culler in the second quarter kicked a 32-yard field goal at the 743 mark, made it 3-0 Lucas. Then with a minute left until halftime, Andrew Smullen, an eight-yard touchdown pass to Zach Deal. Point after goodbye color, 10-0 Lucas. That was our score at the half. Third quarter, 6-11 mark, a 43-yard touchdown pass again. It was Smullen to deal. Point after goodbye color, 17-0 Lucas. Then with 1-16 to go in the third, color booted a 41-yard field goal. Would have been good from better than 50. 20-0 Lucas going to the fourth quarter. Looks like Cub domination. Not so fast, says Danville. They score four times in the fourth quarter. Danville at the 746 mark, 
was a touchdown pass from the quarterback Wessaker. This time he hooked up with Spencer Payne. 10 yards, 20 to 6. They missed the extra point. And then at the 727 mark, it was a 40 yard touchdown pass. This time it went to Caden Colopy. They went for two. That was no good. And it was 20 to 12 in favor of Lucas. But Danville, remember they had an onside kick after that first score. So Danville down 20 to 12. They score with 123 to go. In the game, it was an eight-yard touchdown pass. And again, it was the man of the night, Max Payne, throwing it into the end zone. And that made our score 20-20 to after the two-point conversion. The two-point conversion was good on a pass that went to Ryan Lucas. Then with 13 seconds to play in the game, a 43-yard touchdown pass from Max Payne to the former quarterback, turn wide receiver in Walker Wessaker, 27 to 20, they boot it through. And Chris, I'll tell you what, stun people and people who are thrilled out here tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, half the town of Danville is out on the, out on the field right now with their team. And, 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 you know, you see a number of the Danville guys kind of going over and onto the Lucas end and just the mutual respect, I think, for these, these two programs have for one another. Uh, both both very similar in types of uh, kind of gritty, tough towns and, and and approaches to the game. What an what an exciting game! Like you said, it's you know Lucas has got a great program, and it's 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 sad to see it kind of end like that. They're going to wonder how how and when and why that slipped away from them uh, for quite some time uh, now. And and Danville is going to remember the the fantastic fourth quarter comeback. I I think with five minutes left in the third quarter, I said. Um, Danville needs to score every time they get the ball in order to win this game. I was wrong because they didn't score in the third quarter when they had the football and managed to steal a possession in the fourth quarter with that onside kick, scoring four times and winning the football game. What a, what a great high school football game, week 13. Yeah, d just incredible you know, storybook. They'll be talking about it for ages in Danville. The team in 2022 that was you know down 20 nothing to Lucas entering quarter number four. And they rally and score four times in the fourth quarter, and they are off to play for the ninth regional title in school history. 27 to 20, the win tonight for the Danville Blue Devils under second-year head, excuse me, first-year first year. head coach Matt Bloom. He was two years as the offensive coordinator, first year as head coach. Boy, I tell you what, first year going to a uh, regional title has to feel pretty good for him. Huh? That's not too bad. To he'll put a stamp on on uh, start his stamp and his legacy uh, with that Danville program. All right, we are going to turn our attention to the star of the night, one of the many stars for the Danville Blue Devils, and that is Max Payne. First of all, congratulations Thank on the you. win. How, how does it feel you're going to go play for a regional title next Saturday night? Ooh, that's a feeling I haven't felt before. Sorry, my voice is kind of No, gone, you're good. Ooh, that last second throw. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't do that again if I tried. <laughs> uh, well, it's... I don't know how to describe it right now. Well, if you would, walk us through this. In, in, in your mind, in the team's mind, you're down 20 to nothing going to the fourth quarter. Was it play at a time, series at a time? What was the coach telling you guys when, when you were down headed to the fourth quarter? Um, honestly, I think I'm not trying to down on him, but I think, he kind of, I think some of the coaches kind of lost faith in us. They were like, just keep fighting, just keep fighting. And then we kept fighting and started pushing back. And then, and then there was a little bit more life left in everyone. Well, for you, talk about your, your two big throws there. You, the quarterback moved to, to out to wide receiver. You slide in at quarterback. You made some great throws. Walk us through that that touchdown pass you made there, that 43-yarder. Um, <laughs> I dropped back. <laughs> they had guys coming out the field. I was kind of like, oh. <laughs> so I stepped up, and then I seen Walker had a step or two on him, and I just heaved it deep as I was going down. And You just Lumble. chucked it. You yeah, didn't, you didn't have anything to lose at that no. point, right? You just Lumble threw it up in I the air. I look up, and he caught it, and I was <laughs> Uh, it was a feeling I'll never probably feel again. Well, you are on your way to play for the ninth regional title in school history. What was it like looking up in the stands and seeing all the fans? Oh, well, it's definitely a lot more than we've ever experienced before. And then first time actually playing here, too. Nice field and big big stadium and with a lot of bleachers for everyone. And it, it was great having everyone behind us. Well, congratulations, Max. Great game tonight. You are our Spitzer Motors game changer. We got a T-shirt for you. We're going to get a photo with you. That's your T-shirt to keep. Okay, thank you. Hold that up. We'll get a photo of you. Congratulations and good luck next week, okay? Thank you. Thanks so much. Max Payne, our Spitzer Motors game changer, player of the game, as he had a couple big touchdown passes in the fourth quarter, and Danville is on their way to play 
for a regional title next week. Thank you very much, Max. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the win. And Danville, again, is off to play for a regional title next week. And you can tell he, he's, he's just out of gas now, right? He's tired. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he plays every snap, both sides of the ball. Um, plays running back, quarterback, probably probably some wide out, probably uh, – I don't know. He'll probably help take the, the water in it after the game's over. Maybe drive the bus if home. If he's allowed you know, to drive the bus, don't let that, him take it home. He'll probably yeah. drive the bus home tonight. But what a what a great team win. Um, you know, it, it doesn't just take Max Payne. It, 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 you know, the balls they were dropping earlier, they were catching late in the game. Um, so credit those receivers and how much time they had to throw the ball down the stretch um, wasn't, wasn't really an issue. So it was a great team win for them. Well, I'll tell you what, he had a great ball game here tonight. And how about just stepping into the fourth quarter and saying, hey, we want you to – you know, be able to make some plays, you know, step up, maybe run, maybe throw. I mean, th I mean, I, I, I haven't covered Danville all year. I'm sure uh, they've moved him around a lot, but, you know, yeah. big, big ball game to it. That, 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 you know, that, yeah, that's it a was, big time it was, play, It right? was on the line, right? The game was on the line at that point. They had did that a little bit last week against Hillsdale, moved those guys in and out, and, and Max played quite a bit of quarterback a, a week ago. So I don't think it's something that, you know, that they hadn't done. You know, back, back when we had uh, – Oh, and Hatfield, remember little Hattie? I do. Uh, we, I remember we would, him, yeah. We would occasionally throw him in a quarterback in, in, in various times of the game. And, and you know, that's that's how you build depth on a, on a team where, you know, you might have, you know, 20, 20 guys stand on the sideline. They've, they've got to play multiple positions. Well, I'll tell you what, a win tonight for Danville and Max Payne. Again, our Spitzer Motors game changer player of the game. And what a whale of a game it was here in the Clear Fork Valley. Our heck of a play tonight as we hand down some free pizza from Giannino's, uh, Walker Wessaker, he played very well at quarterback, caught uh, that big touchdown, and uh, give him some free pizza from the Heck Law Offices and Giannino's Pizzeria. But you go across the board for, for Danville, and you just think it. That's why coaches tell you, don't give up. You keep playing. You keep playing because look what just happened. Most Again, analytics numbers would have said chances to win. Very slim going to the fourth quarter, and Max Payne and company delivered. Yeah, we're just watching that last play uh, from Max. Uh, kind of steps up in the pocket. Looks like he's going to run it. Then he's going to take it around the edge. And then, and like you said, he probably you know he saw him down the field and just and threw it up. And and like I said, those 50-50 balls. It, it, I don't care if you're a fan, the 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 kid's mother, um, us up here or a coach. Everybody's holding their breath in that moment. No one can do anything about it. But those two young men on the field and. And somebody's going to come down with it, and it, and it fell in the hands of, of the Danville Blue Devils. Tell you right. what, I, I I think I think he got hit watching that replay right as he unloaded that mm -hmm. ball. I think he got hit, and I'll tell you what, bet when he looked up and that ball floated into the arms of Wesseker, this place went nuts, yeah. and Danville again is off to play. Have we heard final score, Travis? And one would assume it's going to be JFK. They were up 35 to nothing last we heard. We'll try to get you that final or at least an updated score on that. But that is pretty much our broadcast here tonight from Clear Fork High School on the Reinhardt Insurance Post Game Show, brought to you by the Reinhardt Insurance Agency, Mansfield's trusted agency since 1956. You can learn about all of their services, ReinhardtInsurance.com. Gary, John, Mark, Ted, and the entire Reinhardt team would like to say good luck to all area student athletes as we head into wintertime, and it is a final. Warren JFK has defeated Salineville Southern 35 to nothing. So it's Warren JFK and Danville in the regional title game next week at a site to be determined by the OHSAA. <laughs> All right, we're going to break away from the WMAN guys. I want to thank them for another amazing job this year, helping out uh, with us. But now it's time to get ready to head on home. We got the final Friday night pigskin of the season coming up at midnight tonight. We'll have the highlights from this crazy game here in the Clear Fork Valley, as well as Highlights of Crestview's loss at the last seconds in their game. Colonel Crawford falling in overtime, as well as the Mansfield senior game from last night, and West Holmes falling in a close one as well. All those scores, we'll find out the matchups for next week and much more coming up at midnight tonight on our final Friday night pigskin for the football season. But Let's get on out of here. I want to thank everybody that helped make things possible today. Thank you very much for having me.
Absolutely. You are very welcome. Thank you so much for listening. Jory Hollenbeck, Keaton Cooper on cameras, Aaron Hines, and Chris Miller, our WMAN crew tonight. Amazing job by them, as always. Also, our sponsors for this evening, TMS Plus, digital marketing for local businesses, Ohio Valley Manufacturing, heavy gauge stamping and precision blanking services, hiring now. Spitzer Motors, home of the Spitzer Shield, shielding you from the unexpected on all purchases. Order a new vehicle exactly the way you want it, even if it's not in stock. Scout Construction LLC, with more than a decade of business, you can trust Scout Construction with your roofing and siding needs. Call Scout Construction for more information, 419-989-7240. Danville Feed and Supply is proudly serving the community for over 50 years. Come visit us in our new store. Knox Community Hospital in the community for the community. The Killbuck Savings Bank, community banking, it's what we do. It's who we are every single day. And the Mechanics Bank, that's better. Also want to thank the folks here at Clear Fork High School for allowing us to be here tonight and the OHSA for allowing us to be live and free in this amazing regional semifinal. Your final score one more time. Danville scores 27 unanswered in the fourth quarter to knock off Lucas 27-20. They'll take on Warren JFK next Saturday night, and hopefully we will be there to bring you the action live and free. For Aaron Hines and Chris Miller, I am Travis Berardi saying so long from Belleville.